Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? I am your host, Jim Masters. You know what that means. It's 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, or it's morning in Australia and New Zealand, or it's 1 a.m. in Holland and other parts of Europe, and it's midnight in Ireland and England and Scotland. Whatever the case may be, whatever the time is, we welcome you to our entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we launched 18 weeks ago to inspire, to motivate, to educate, to inform, to entertain, and to have lots of lovity, as our audience has designated it. Hello to everybody all around the world. I am your host, Jim Masters. It's always a pleasure. I always look forward to this time right now where I can come into your world and you come into my world. And collectively, we have a great time together. Since we're live, since we're on the internet, anything can happen. <laughs> now, I've always loved live television and live radio and live stage work, and I've done all of that for years. Um, the internet is always something a little bit different. The internet sometimes, like the weather, can do what it wants to do whenever it wants to do. Regardless of whether you're on a major uh, television network or you're just doing something out of your house, whatever it is. So we've always uh, had an opportunity to sort of work around whatever the internet wants to do. But uh, we are here and we're having a great day and it was a beautiful day today. We, uh, I was actually on the air in my professional work uh, interviewing, um, interviewing a wonderful woman named Elaine Lankford, and she is with Transformation Love Ministries, and that was a beautiful interview. She loved the interview that we did together on Close Up Radio, which is one of the many hats that I wear in television and radio, is uh, work with Close Up Television Radio in New York, um, anchoring and hosting shows with my uh, colleague Doug Llewellyn, who hosts the People's Court. She loved it so much, she wants to do a part two, and I just heard about that moments ago, and that's really exciting. Um, I love the work that I do, and I just posted something on Facebook to that effect. I'm very blessed to have an opportunity to have studied this work and have you know, fostered opportunities for myself to do this work in broadcast media ever since, really, when I was a kid, when I was the kid walking around the house with the Panasonic cassette recorder and the little microphone and interviewing the family and pretending I was a news reporter. And my sister and I doing plays in our garage with the neighborhood kids and the lemonade stand on the corner. And we were lucky. Our house was on a corner. So we got that street and that street. So we worked, we really were lucky because we got, you know, the kids that walked on that side and the kids that walked on that side. So it was really cool. But, um, and then we used to do plays, of course, in the bedroom. And the bed would be the stage, and we'd like do a rope on the wall and put like curtains across. And then, of course, my mother would say, "Are you using my good curtains for this?" <laughs> and uh, we'd always have a great time. So it was fostered really early for me, and then went into high school and college and studied all of it. I also studied, as I've mentioned before, architecture and design, along with. Uh, television and radio, communications, journalism, broadcasting, media law, economics, journalism, acting, theater, writing and producing, and every aspect of the industry, and I've worked in every aspect of the industry uh, professionally. So 18 weeks ago, we uh, got all the equipment. We figured out how to do this, which seems strange because I've been doing this type of work for years. Yet this was new with the internet. I've always had the YouTube channel. I've always been on Facebook since 2009 and Instagram and all these other places, Twitter. But then to create something like this was a new venture. So 18 weeks ago, we sort of did it and I turned the lights on and I was sitting in a chair and we had sort of a scaled back version of this nice set we have here in our home studio now. And I started just talking to the camera with the lights, studio lights, uh, TV lights, the whole bit. and. All of a sudden, people started coming in and started watching and started saying, hey, this is kind of cool. What, what is this guy doing? What is he, what's he about? So then we started creating this world of uh, what we call lovity. So many people just said, hey, I'm enjoying this. It's something a little bit different. It's an entertainment lifestyle talk show series that has sort of the old school feeling to it with the modern sensibilities of today. And here we are 18 weeks later, and I think 150. 50 episodes too because we're live every single night 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific with you here on the gym master show live and it's fantastic something we do that i think uh, i love doing and that is to acknowledge the viewers now 
in my professional work on radio and television, I've always acknowledged the viewers. I've always enjoyed meets and greets. We've gone on cruises together. We are talking about doing a Lovety Cruise. So many of you have asked about doing a Gym Masters show, Lovety Cruise. Lovety is a word we use with this show uh, because the show is positive, it's inspiring, and it's about light, love, and levity. Anybody that's watching anywhere around the world right now, we welcome you to this show. Uh, doesn't You don't have to be part of a political party. You don't have to be of a certain gender. You don't have to be of a certain income level, certain race, or anything. You don't have to be nine feet tall or two feet tall. Everybody is welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. And I'm very conscious of uh, greeting and acknowledging the wonderful folks who watch this show some night after night. Some actually arrange their days around when this show is on. And I find that to be very, very beautiful. <laughs> That's really amazing because I've done that with shows I've enjoyed too. But so many of you, uh, are, you're either binge watching on YouTube where we archive all the shows or you are watching live. You want to make sure that you're here live because you want to interact with us. And you know I always have interactivity here on the show. So for that, we always toast you and you and you and you and you and you all around the world. I, as your host, every night toast you for watching the show, tagging, sharing, having watch parties, celebrating life with us, celebrating positivity with us, celebrating the goodness of life with us, with amazing guests, on location segments, food, music, comedy, pop-up shows, whatever we can create here for you and yours. I'm pulling out all of my TV and radio background and here at the home studio, trying to create a community here of positivity, and levity for all of us. I mean, as much as you enjoy the show, I enjoy doing it and I look forward to it. We put a lot of time and effort into it. So I toast to you. Now I know Christine Clifton in North Carolina is saying, my God, how big was that bottle of Relax Riesling that Gym Masters has? Well, this is it, Christine. Um, we've really stretched it out. <laughs> uh, there is this blue bottle called Relax. It's a Riesling. It's, it's a very light, light, little sweet wine. And um, this is what's left of it, Christine Clifton in North Carolina, one of our great viewers and supporters of our show, lovers of our show, sharers and taggers of our show. So this is it. This is it. This is the last bit. Like the last couple of nights, we've had this just this one little glass here, this martini glass filled with the wine. And I take my usual sip and that's that. And then somehow what happens is I put it down over here on the left. And then Mr. George Burns, who's with us with his cigar, which I really think is doubling as a straw. Somehow it gets lower and lower by the time the show is over. And I have no idea how that happens. I think George is up to something here. And here is George. George greets you, of course. George is here. And we love when George is here. Now, you may look at this and say, this is corny. What the heck is this guy doing? Well, let me tell you what's going on here and why not smile and laugh, right? George Burns is here because you guys said you wanted to stay on the show. I put him on one night and here he is. This is my Aunt Lillian, one of my mother's sisters, who um, collected dolls. And when he was 100, she collected the authentic replica George Burns doll. So there he is. And you know, he was a TV host and a comedian. So he is here joining us as well. And he's here every night to greet you. And believe me, if I do not show George Burns or any of our cast of characters, people will comment and say, where are they? We miss them. So right now, Jen, I'm sure is very, very Zen. Here is Jeannie. Jeannie is in here. The authentic genie bottle. This thing weighs a ton. It's pretty cool. This was a gift. A friend of mine knew I love I Dream of Genie, you know, a lot of the TV sitcoms. So she got the hand painted uh, authentic bottle. Genie's in there. Genie says hello. And of course, there's a few more quickies here that we want to share with you. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of work doing all of this, but I love it because you guys love it. Silver is here. Yes, Silver is here. One of our mascots. Got him on a television shoot when I was in Europe. We were on a television shoot in Greece, Germany, Netherlands, and then got this in Switzerland. And it was amazing how we got him back without him breaking into a million pieces in the luggage. He was actually wrapped up and he was in the carry case. 
which I didn't shove in the upper luggage. I had the thing like wrapped around uh, me and then I had to shove it under the seat, but he's here and he greets you as well. That's silver. And then another one here. Again, I usually don't do this in my professional work because probably wouldn't be able to. So we're doing it on the Jim Masters show live and we love it. Jimmy's here. Jimmy greets you. Jimmy says hello. <laughs> He's always got that one arm sticking out. Like he wants to either swat me <laughs> or he wants to uh, say hello to you. So there he is. There he goes. Cute, huh? After everything we've been going through all year long, how can that not put a smile on your face? I don't care if you're nine feet tall and you mud wrestle or if you knit. It doesn't matter. There you go. Takes you back to your childhood. This was a childhood toy. And I tell you, it's very well preserved. My parents gave it and uh, with his blue feet, porcelain, and the whole bit. So Jimmy's there. Jimmy hangs out, of course, with uh, silver. George hangs out with Jeannie, of course, and he siphons off that martini glass. Watch, when you see it next, it'll be lower. And then, of course, Gilligan, our newest addition. Why is Gilligan here? Well, thanks to Bob Denver, the actor who played Gilligan on Gilligan's Island and was in Dobie Gillis, his lovely wife, Dreamer Denver, who was a guest on our show. She said, you're missing something on this set. And I looked around and I said, what could I be missing on this set? What, what more could we fit on this set? I mean, we've got that crystal turtle over there that Carla in Brazil loves. We've got the telly over there, the telly award. I mean, what else could we have? She says, you gotta have Gilligan. So she shipped us an actual official Gilligan doll. And there he is from Gilligan's Island, Bob Denver. Aloha, dream of Denver, she says. I think that's beautiful. I mean, we've had an opportunity to meet so many fabulous people. All of you around the world are amazing guests here. And I think it's beautiful. And we have one more thing that we do here. If I remember, sometimes we get so engrossed in the comments with the viewers, we forget to do this. But we go Hollywood. We go big time just for you guys. Lights, camera, and action. Don't you love this thing? This thing is really cool. This thing actually hangs on the wall. <laughs> and in one of the rooms in the house, we had this. We have a sort of like a media room that has, you know, all the media stuff. And this, I, I literally took this off the wall just for this show. <laughs> and so we can call this show Off the Wall if I change the name. Lights, camera, action. The Gym Masters show is live. We're going to have a good time together. That's what this show is all about. And let's begin. All right. So now it's official. I think I've done everything I am supposed to do with the show. I can't think of anything else. Oh, yes. We greet our viewers. We like to greet the viewers. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to take a look at some of the amazing comments. Um, just so you know, we have an extraordinary guest. And I'm very excited about the guest. Not only is she lovely inside and out, but she's brilliant at what she does. She's an incredible actress, fabulous singer. She's an avid fan, lover, and viewer of this show. You've seen her name appear in the comments on this show and other guests have been on, and I love that. She's been very supportive of this show. She's been very uh, gracious and supportive of other guests as well. And now she's a guest on our show. And she's uh, renowned as an actress and singer. She's going to perform live for us. We also have uh, video treats for you as well and photos and so much more. Acclaimed actress and singer Jennifer Roberts is here exclusively tonight on the Gym Master Show Live. And we're very, very excited. And again, she has the, the double pleasure of being a viewer as well as a guest. So she can really tell you you know, what the show is all about from both angles, which I think is very, very cool. Let's greet some of our fabulous, amazing and wonderful audience around the world. Crystal in Connecticut, who is our viewer of the week. What does that mean? Well, we celebrate a viewer each uh, week and somebody who's been watching the show and loves it. Hi, Jim and everyone. Happy Wednesday. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Looking forward to another exciting show. Crystal, you're here. So that tops it off. Thank you very much for being here and continue to celebrate wearing that crown as our viewer of the week. Mary Bishop, welcome Jim, Jennifer, and all the lovelies from Pine Island, Florida. We love that. Good to see you, Mary, watching on the YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. 
If you're on the YouTube channel, we would love it if you would subscribe. We're building that channel. Click notification bell so you don't miss anything. We actually added an extra video today in our Masters Mantras Live series that we do as well. A really cool, beautiful shot. Take a look at that on the channel, Jim Masters TV. Marilyn is watching in Wichita, Kansas. Hi, Jim and all the loveries. Happy hump day. That's right. It is Wednesday, isn't it? Good to see you in Wichita. Did you get the snow in Kansas? They got like buried in snow in Colorado. My sister and brother-in-law were on a trip. They went up to Indiana and then they went to Las Vegas and then they drove to California and then they drove from California back home to where they are in Florida and they just arrived in Florida and they went through the incredible heat and then the snowstorm in Colorado, which was incredible. Mary Bishop, hello all. You know what I think is cool about this show? You guys say hello to each other too, which I think is really, really wonderful. Carla is here. Hello, Jim. Hello, everyone. Carla watching in South America. She's watching in beautiful Brazil. Love you, Carla. Love the fact that you're here. She loves that crystal turtle that's over there. She's got a good eye to see that that crystal turtle is there, which was a gift from a dear friend, Beth. Uh, Ernestine is watching in North Carolina. Hi, Jim, and hope everyone is having a good day. It's raining there today. I'm sure the rain is probably cooling things off because I know it's been hot in the Carolinas. Marianne Lopinto is here. We love when Marianne is here. She's a brilliant photographer too. Hello there. Good to see you on the YouTube channel. Watching in uh, Hampshire in beautiful Great Britain, we have Avril Britain here. It's wonderful to have you here, Avril. I hope you are doing well. Thank you for watching. I realize it's like uh, 12, 23 a.m. your time. So the fact that you stay up for us, we really appreciate that. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mary Bishop says, nice jacket. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've worn this jacket on television. I think this turtleneck too. So we're sporting it here for you on the Gym Master Show Live. What's cool about doing this show is I can bring out all of my television wardrobe for you as well. Good evening from beautiful Pinehurst, North Carolina. Cheers, Jim and lovely friends. And Christine, yes, just to answer your question again, which I did earlier, this is the last of that Relax Riesling. And uh, the reason why we're using Relax Riesling is because at the end of the show, we always show this. We tell everybody to relax, to breathe, to love one another. So that's why this. <laughs> It's lower. You notice how it's lower? I think George Burns is siphoning it with his cigar, which I think is really a straw. Uh, Mary Bishop says, uh, raining in Southwest Florida too. Lorraine is here. Hi, Jim. I'm loving the jacket. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Dear friend, Marsha Lyon, who has for years come into the public television studios while I would be on camera hosting and answering the phones and taking those PBS pledges for uh, some of her favorite shows. She'd actually come in and she would volunteer to take the calls. She lives in uh, Massachusetts. Hopefully, Marsha, we'll be together again and we'll break bread and get a bite to eat once we're able to do that. Um, we have family in Massachusetts. When I come through Massachusetts, we will come see you. Uh, you're watching on YouTube. I love it. Crystal says cheers. Kathy Short is here. Hello, Jim and Lovities from Cleveland. Good old Cleveland, Ohio. Good to see you, Kathy Short and Kathleen. Hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. Hope all is well. You as well. Good to see you as well. Jeff Dwoskin is here. Hey, Jim, what's up? Cheers to you, bro. Cheers to you as well. Watching in Michigan, just outside the Detroit area, Motown. You got it. Good to see you, Jeff. Mary is here. Cheers. Cheryl Krantz is here. Evening, Jim, from North Carolina. Boy, we have several people from North Carolina that are watching right now. Avril says, ching, ching, Jim. You got it. Ralph is watching in Indiana. Good evening to you, Ralph. Christine says, so happy you have enjoyed your relaxed Riesling. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You certainly shout out this show all the time. Rose is here from Michigan. Fantastic. Good to see you in Michigan. Welcome, Rose, on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Give that uh, page a subscribe. We would love that. Uh, Francis, hello, everyone. Good to see you, Francis. Jennifer is Zen. We love it. She's Zen already. She's usually Zen at the end of the show. She's Zen already, so that's cool. 
Ann Wozniak. Hello, everyone. A little late, but a very good excuse. Had early dinner with granddaughter. Of course, we understand that. Granddaughter comes first. We'll always be here for you, Ann. Uh, hi, Jennifer. She's great. I have videos her. <laughs> uh, Paula is here. Hey, Paula, you're watching on Periscope. In addition to being live right now on YouTube at Gym Masters TV, Facebook Gym Masters TV, we are live right now on Periscope at Gym Masters TV and Twitch at Gym Masters TV. No, I didn't say itch. Twitch. <laughs> There's so many things you got to keep up with, right? Good to see you watching live on Periscope right now. Paula, welcome. And you're in Michigan as well. Happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to our show. We're here every night live on uh, the Gym Master Show Live at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And Rini Katz, guess what? Our wonderful guest, Jennifer Roberts, we were just talking about you moments ago. We were talking about how much we both love you. Happy Wednesday, Jim and Lodi's checking in from the Midlands of Flushing, where the U.S. Open is happening, where my Mets play in City Field, where they have the fake cutout cardboard images of people because <laughs> you can't go to this you can't go to the uh stadium we are watching the i'm a tennis fan uh, so we are watching the uh the open here at the house cold in michigan uh cold yeah hopefully no snow yet there in michigan you're watching on periscope hello ralph everybody's saying hello to each other hello from oregon excited for the show and your fabulous guest jennifer roberts well if this is the first time we're here every night for you and i've been looking for you chris in comber around belfast northern ireland hey jim hope you're well i watched alfred hitchcock's psycho on blu-ray great film oh my god on blu-ray that makes it even more vivid good to see you scream queen army chris in northern ireland watching live so we have many more here. Uh, continue to send those comments. Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here from all around the world. Our very special guest is Jennifer Roberts, acclaimed actress, singer, and um, she's just extraordinary. We're so excited to have her here. Let's welcome her to the Gym Master Show live right here and right now. Jennifer, welcome. Good to have you with us. And you are in Michigan, right? I'm in Michigan, yes. Oh, it's so nice. Now, a couple of people said it's cold in Michigan. Are you cold right now or are you, you good where you are? I turned my furnace on about two hours ago. It's dark and rainy and cold. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. So winter, you know, as soon as Labor Day came and went, all of a sudden we're, we've got the reminder of the cold weather coming. Well, you're going to be warming us up with some phenomenal entertainment. And <laughs> thank you for joining us here because I know you are as much as you are a uh, you know a wonderful performer you've been a fan of our show and our series for a while and people probably will recognize and here come all the welcomes for you uh yeah i love how they do this they they post all the welcomes uh and we'll show those uh, you've had an opportunity to be a viewer of the show as much as now being a guest and uh and i appreciate the fact that you watch the show and support it in the way that you do it's been great. I've learned a lot about friends and uh, entertainers I didn't know much about. That's fantastic. Look at all of this here. Look at all Aww. this. And, and like you know, because you're, you're a viewer as much as you are a uh, fan of the show and now a guest, Crystal says, hi, Jennifer. Welcome to the show. Rini Katz says, thank you to you, Jennifer. Means so much. Of course, of course. And uh, Avril in... Uh, Europe in the United Kingdom says welcome Jennifer and I tell you it's uh, like 12:30 a.m. where she is so we love her. Mary Bishop says welcome Jennifer. Kathleen uh -huh. Walker says welcome as well. And awesome. let's see. And I love when Renee is here. Renee is one of our great supporters. And if I'm ever passing through Iowa, I want to meet <laughs> Renee. She just went through this inland hurricane, like a derecho, they call it. I don't know if you've ever known that. I never knew. I don't know if you have it in Michigan, but it's like an inland hurricane with the 110 mile an hour winds. And where she is in Iowa, they just went through that. And, uh, you know, while her her trees are being knocked down she still didn't want to miss an episode of our show <laughs> that that's, is a loyal viewer <laughs> that's loyalty that's commitment yeah 
Jeff says he's in Michigan as well. So he awesome. says hello. And Jennifer Barry says hello. And Kathleen mm -hmm. in New York City says hello. Ernestine in North Carolina says hello. Of course, Renee in Iowa, we love her. She awesome. says hello. Kathy Short says hello as well. Perfect. Francis, uh, nice colors on you, Jim Masters. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Rini says, hi, Jennifer, a fellow viewer and performer. That's right. She's had the, the viewer and guest experience. And you saw when yeah. Rini was uh, a guest on the show, a wonderful episode. Yeah, Ann Wozniak. Right. Yeah, Rini was amazing. Uh, hi, Jennifer, would love that weather. So now they're so hot in Jacksonville, yeah. they want the cool weather that you have. <laughs> yeah, this was a surprise for us. Absolutely. Uh, Renee says, welcome. And Jennifer says, can't wait for cool and cold weather. Go to Michigan. And uh, Chris, who is in Northern Ireland, says, welcome, Jennifer, to the Lovety family. So you got love from Thank Northern you. Ireland coming your way. Rose says, I'm watching you, Jennifer. <laughs> Paula, watching on Periscope, says, hi, awesome. Jennifer. And Francis says, a warm welcome, Jennifer. It's nice to see all this love. And usually mm -hmm. you're one of the people posting I am. welcome to whoever. Mm -hmm. And Christine says, uh, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live, Jennifer. <clears throat> Christine's one of our big, big, big supporters, just like Renee. I turned our furnace on today, too. <laughs> I went I went about uh, till about 4 o'clock, and I said it's got to go on. It was, that, it was getting that cold, huh? Mm -hmm. So how are you doing how are you doing through all of the craziness of everything that we've been going through uh you're an artist you're a performer you're a creative and you need the that interaction with people and to keep those creative juices going uh what are some of the things you've been doing jennifer to to keep the the creative flow happening in your life during all this unusualness of the year we're in together um i started by just um um somebody just texted me if you could hear that yeah song. i heard the ding and ah, Lin let me get rid of it linda and saint augustine says good evening mr lovety good evening lovelies good evening welcome yeah, I don't jennifer know how to, roberts they don't know how to turn that off. oh i did turn it off on the on the um app but it came up nobody texted me um anyway i started by, <laughs> hold all um, calls <laughs> yeah i had turned that off at the beginning but it's on um and I everybody have loves you everybody loves yeah, you please. thank you paula um so I began by watching old movies and old TV shows. I'm, I'm a huge old, old TV fan. So I watched uh, Dick Van Dyke and oh, I, yes. um, all the greats, all of the Mary Tyler Moores, all the Perry Masons. Um, and then I had bought a device. We'll probably talk about this a little bit later because um, I've had like four boxes of old uh, DVDs and old VHS tapes of my singing back 25, 30 years ago that I've never looked at since. And so I thought now is the time since I have time to pull out this old box and this little converter that I bought like six years ago and start going through them one by one. So I started posting them on Facebook and the feedback has been great. And that's kept me uh, motivated and going. And um, I've been vocalizing most days. I'm creating a couple of new shows. And so I'm doing research on those. Um, listening to your show, uh, I'm watching a lot of my friends perform online. I've watched a few um, workshops online. Um, trying to get my home in order too. That's a big deal. Yeah. Have you cleaned, cleaned a lot of closets? <laughs> I've cleaned a lot of closets. I've gone through a lot of purging. I've given a lot of stuff away. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I've taken advantage of it. I've had a, a few slow, quiet days where I've been, I wouldn't say depressed, but more down than normal. Uh, then I find music that motivates me or a film or a, a program that gets me inspired or listening to a friend on a, uh, on a show uh, or a live stream and it gets me motivated. Um, but I'm trying to be as productive as I can during these times. Which is wonderful. And that's what it is. That's what we're all doing. And uh, Marshall Line in Massachusetts welcomes you as well. And everybody's welcoming. Allison Tillman is welcoming you and, and so awesome. much more. It's beautiful to see all these love, uh, loveities coming through here. Um, let's go back in time a little bit. Um, for you, um, you know, in your youth, when you were a kid, were you always sort of like entertaining and, and running around the house singing and dancing and performing and trying to entertain the family? When did you realize that you were meant to be a performer, an actress, a singer, all of the above? And what came first, the singing or the acting for you? Uh, that's, that's a lot of questions in one. But I'll start by saying that I was raised in a musical family. My mom is a classically trained vocalist and uh, she taught piano. 
And we had all kinds of cast albums at our home. We had all kinds of jazz and bluegrass, all kinds of music. I was immersed in young. My first solos were in church and uh, school, probably around second or third grade. And it took up it took up uh, a lot of nerve to audition. And once I did, and I it was easier. Elevator was uh, we had something very unusual at my home growing up. We grew up with a movie theater in our basement. Wow. My dad is a retired dentist, and he had a patient who ran a movie theater. So when I was probably fifth, sixth grade, maybe a little bit younger, he started bringing films home every night. And this was way before cable, obviously, and VHS and so forth. So we were the only ones with the movies, and we saw absolutely everything. Shirley Temple, uh, all of the Westerns, a lot of contemporary things. Singing in the Rain was my very favorite growing up. We saw Charlie Chan, you, mm -hmm. you name it, we saw it. So I was immersed in film very young and I knew very young that I wanted to sing and dance and act. And I knew that I wanted to do all three. And um, probably singing was the easiest in what happened first, but acting was always my passion. And I ended up getting a degree in acting. I, I double majored as a music major for three years, but finally I knew that that degree or that what I wanted to do was um, was more theater and and, um, and acting. So that that kind of uh, is how that worked. That's fantastic. So yeah. you pretty much knew early on, relatively, that yeah. you were on a mission and that this was this was uh, art and and work that you were destined to do. It, it was in you, and you needed to express yourself. Yeah. So as you were going along. Um, with these influences that you've had within the family early, did you do sort of the, the high school plays and all the different things that went along that gave you opportunities to express yourself vocally yes. as well as the acting? Yes. We uh, had a great junior high and we did um, full out production song and dance uh, in junior high. And then in high school, we had a phenomenal choir director. We had swing choir I was in. We did... Um, uh, women's chorale. We had musicals I was a part of. We had a great uh, acting teacher also. So I was very immersed in junior high and high school. And then obviously in college. Uh, I also did the state uh, solo ensemble competitions. I started voice lessons really young at 15. One of the nicest things my parents did for me was put me in voice lessons young. Um, and I did that all the way through college. And then when I started singing with symphony, I went back to the same teacher to uh, keep those skills, refresh those skills and work those up. But very young, I started uh, classically singing and uh, taking every opportunity to be on stage. And I was more of a ham back then, I think, than I am now. I was a little bit more fearless in, in junior high, high school and college. Which a lot of times we all are as well. And uh, so then you've really sort of perfected your, your way and your sound and, and uh, your presentation. How would you describe uh, yourself as a singer, first with the singing side of uh, your incredible art. How do you describe yourself as a singer, the style, the way you present it? I think I present it uh, from an acting perspective. So I think I, I come from, I make sure that I know the music well, and I make sure that, I, that the arrangements are in my, in my um, voice and range. And then I try to focus on the message. So that's what really stands out on my CD. People are telling me that the message comes through, um, but it has to. The vocal has to already be there. Otherwise, I'd be thinking about how am I singing, where am I placing this, and and all of the musical part. So I try to get past that pretty early, and then focus on the lyric and the the message of each song. So I would say more from an acting uh, background. Which is an interesting way to look at it because, uh, you know, sometimes those two worlds are separate, but the fact that you're able to effectively blend the two, I think, is sort of an advantage for you, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, music came easier, like I said, and I've sung a lot of different styles over the years. Uh, but I think that going back to what I love the most is acting and, and communicating, and that's what's been such a gift to be able to do with Cabaret and, and also with my CD the uh, ability to communicate through song. Which is, again, we're all communicators, right? And, and we have this uh, this compelling need to want to communicate with others and share not only our stories, but also lift people up as well while we're doing that and allow them to share their stories too. Um, for you, uh, as you were going along and you were sort of perfecting and fine tuning your craft, what were some of those uh, opportunities and maybe big breaks that happened for you, whether it's acting or singing or both, 
that really spurred things in a forward movement for you, Jennifer? Let's see. Uh, I would say going back to, um, let's start with, let's say high school. My parents took us to Opryland theme park, which is in Nashville when I was 15. And I saw this amazing musical review, uh, song and dance, vocal jazz. And I knew that I wanted to do that someday. I'd already decided that I wanted to do theater. I did summer stock um, a couple years later. So when I auditioned for Opryland, um, when I was 21, I was, I was actually cast in that show that I really wanted to do. And uh, that was an early thing. So early on, everything I pretty much auditioned for, I booked for years. And it was like doors opened and it was very easy to go from one thing to the next. So that was musical theater, that was song and dance. Uh, Theme parks don't always get a great rap, but a lot of really famous uh, Broadway people, a lot of uh, song dance people that are on Broadway and Hollywood so forth started there. So full orchestra, that opened the door doing those to go into working early TV when cable just came out. They launched a TV show and I kept getting asked to be a special guest on that show. And then coming back the next year, I, I, didn't, I did come back. That opened up an album opportunity, which opened up more uh, of the live TV things that I did. And then I happened to have a roommate take my agent or my uh, resume to an agency in, in uh, Nashville. That opened doors for me to start doing commercials. I started booking right away. Mm. And this just started happening. And when I left Nashville and moved back to Detroit, it seemed that I didn't book things for a few months. And then a lot of uh, industrial film, TV, a lot of commercials. Started working for a symphony because someone heard me singing at a, at a, as a guest as a pageant. I wasn't in the pageant, but I was the entertainment. So doors just kept opening up for years. Uh, I wouldn't say any of them were large breaks, but all of them helped perfect my talent and my um, and my skills. I choose to live in the middle of nowhere, and so that kind of hurts my ability to um, to walk through huge doors. But uh, I've been really blessed to do all kinds of different things, and with each one, the door just opened up, and I walked through it, and I grew, and I continued to grow, and then the next door opened up. So it's it's been pretty cool. That's fantastic. And that, you know, as one door closes, another one opens. Mm -hmm. And as you go along, you know, you, you take these opportunities and you run with them. And did you have a vision early on on what you wanted to do and who you wanted to be and the, and the style that you wanted to portray, whether it's acting or singing? Or has that morphed and changed as opportunities and time and your journey has continued, Jennifer? It's all grown and changed. So in high school, college, uh, college, I started getting cast in all the Barbara Cook musical roles. And so I didn't even know who she was till I was 21. Then I was cast in She Loves Me, which is my favorite musical. And then I did a lot of this stuff. So I thought I was definitely gonna go to New York, go to Broadway. And I, I saw myself as the ingenue because that's how I was getting cast. But then after doing song and dance on and on and on, and I decided that I maybe didn't wanna go to Nashville. I went through it or not onto New York. Um, I ended up going through a, a not easy uh, marriage and divorce, so I moved back to Michigan, and that brought up a, a far more opportunities for me as a song and dance person and, and uh, getting into TV. I did an Unsolved Mysteries episode. I'm um, getting into film. I did a really cool film with Hilary Swank. Um, it opened my seven years working as a symphony soloist. And uh, I loved jazz. I did a lot of uh, church concerts over the years too, classical and contemporary Christian. And I just kept, whatever came, I just kept stretching how I sang and what I did. And uh, for me, the most fulfilling thing was to continue to grow as an artist and to continue to share really wonderful material with people. Which is great. I mean, you've touched upon a lot of different genres and things, and that makes you very well-rounded. It also shows that you've been very open to trying a lot of different things because when you do that and you're not boxed into just, I'm only going to sing this, I'm only going to act in these things, I'm only going to do this, it limits you. But you seem to have been open to all opportunities and, and, and venues and projects and productions like I've always done. And I think that really makes you well-rounded, um, you know, and, and you, you also appreciate the nuances of different uh, styles and genres and things of that nature, right? Right, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I didn't ever. I didn't really set my path. I just let things kind of open up, and it was really exciting with each new thing that I did, and I grew from each thing a, a different level of communication, 
Oh, you're welcome, Linda. Yeah. Uh, I've just really, I just really loved the adventure that I've been on, and I've been content a lot with just doing good work. Which is the key, right? And that's mm -hmm. as that's the key. Um, when you're getting ready to perform, when you're getting ready to sing, what are some of the things you do to prepare? Do you sort of, I mean, I have some friends where they, you won't see them for like 48 hours before they're having a performance. You, they won't answer the phone and they, they, you know, some won't go out when it's cold weather. They watch the throat. They won't go out in cold weather. What are some of the things you do to prepare for a performance, whether it's something that's going to be in studio, on stage, whatever it may be. Like you said, vocal rest um, doesn't always happen, especially when I'm producing shows in New York and I'm running, running, running from the hotel to rehearsal to get a meal, to get my clothes, whatever. It's very difficult, but it's really important to rest. And I still use vocal uh, recordings from my college and my symphony years so that I vocalize with my voice teacher um, a couple of times a day on a performance day, but I use it to keep my range up and to to keep um, my voice in good shape. I also um, sometimes will pull away from people. Usually I do uh, for a couple of days if I can. Uh, biggest thing is rest. Uh, for on-camera film things, it's, it's looking at the material, learning, putting aside, resting, coming back to it. Um, I do try to exercise. I do take, take walks today. I did do the thing around the neck and I did wear a hat on because it went down to 50s. Uh, definitely in the winter. I do get more careful when it's uh, a more technical thing. Yeah. Like the symphony airs, I would go a month before a performance without caffeine, which is tough because coffee is my passion. And I cut out sugar. I would cut out carbs. Uh, I would be very, very disciplined. Pop music is a little bit different. Uh, cabaret is a little bit different, but I do try to cut out on things that are going to mess up either my throat or make me sick. Um, mod moderation, but I, I get very disciplined when the, when the project is more technical. And of course, uh, as we both know, as, as people who use our voice, no milk or dairy, especially day of, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. That can... I cut that out. Yes, definitely as well so so you've got you know this wonderful training and wonderful background and uh, there's amazing projects too that you've been involved in what would you say for you whether it's the singing or acting was that big project or production that really then accelerated things for you even more hmm that's a really difficult question um i don't know One for, where you, you were in it and then everybody, you know, the world stopped and they said your phone started ringing as a result of being in that. That's, that's still happening. That's um, still developing. That's still developing <laughs> because uh, when I did the symphony things, nobody knew about them. So this was really funny. Uh, back in the day when I was doing these, we didn't really, I didn't really talk about it. If you didn't have a local cable channel or you weren't given a flyer, you didn't know that I was doing it. I didn't really tell people. I did tell a few friends that came, but I normally kept it quiet. So people are discovering them now, and that's been really wonderful. Um, when I did Guys and Dolls uh, years ago with Tom Wopat, that was definitely a high. And after that, I started getting more musical theater auditions and calls. But then I would take something else that would take me out of the, uh, let's say, the Chicago market. Um, and pretty much everything. I would say my CD that's happening right now is beginning to open doors, which is really neat. It's getting a lot of interest in Europe. It was played about six times in London recently. Uh, it's been playing on a wonderful channel in the Netherlands. Uh, it's called the Great American Songbook Radio Station. They did a two month feature on me, a month and a half maybe, where every two hours he played my CD, a song from it. And then I did a voiceover talking about cabaret and what it means to me. So I was the first one, he announced on Facebook and everywhere, I was the first cabaret artist that they were gonna feature on the Great American Songbook radio station. That's my Sheldon Harnick show, that's kind of opening doors too. Mm. Um, but uh, I would say probably the CD is the one that's accelerating things. It kind of sat there for a while. I did have Len Triola sending it out and Ralph Lampkin sending it out and I sent it out myself. It got some really wonderful reviews, including uh, Stephen Mosier wrote the most recent review, who you had on your, on your um, show. Yeah. And it's been getting really great feedback. So it's definitely stirring up interest. I was just about to start uh, to sign with somebody to tour with my Sheldon Harnick show and my CD show when this hit. 
So I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but you know, it's been six months and we are just kind of all treading water. That's Mr. Harnick. Sheldon mm. Harnick. The night that I did the show, he came, it was a year ago, uh, January, and he came in a snowstorm. This was amazing. I'd invited him uh, back when we were creating the show. And uh, the first night that we did it, which was in 2016, he wrote me and he said, I'd love to be there, but we're vacationing in Hawaii with my family. I hope it gets a good reason so that I hope bring it back. Two years later, we did it a few times and I invited him and he and his wife came to the show in January. And that was, that was definitely a thrill, a, a thrill of a lifetime. Uh, I wouldn't say it was my very best show. I got a really good review by Thomas Mills, who recently passed. He was wonderful. Um, but I was definitely nervous because Mr. and Mrs. Harnick, the creator of some of my favorite work uh, ever, was in the audience. For those who might not be familiar with his work, tell us about some of those incredible works he's known for. He's known for Fiddler on the Roof. He's a lyricist. That's he's a big 96. One. That's a huge one. It's, uh, I think it's the most done show ever. Fiddler on the Roof, he did She Loves Me, which is my very favorite show. In fact, there's five songs from She Loves Me Alone in my show. I sing the guy songs and the girl songs. I could have done the whole show because I love it so much. Um, he also did a show that I love called The Apple Tree. And there's a wonderful story on how I discovered The Apple Tree. Kristen Chenoweth did it a few years ago. But I, uh, should I tell the story? It's a really cool story on The Apple Tree. So um, I was in New York. I traveled for years with the automotive, the auto shows, and I loved it. I, I ran into a friend. I heard that Barbara Cook was singing at the Carlisle. And I was really strapped because some of my work was more lucrative. Some of it didn't pay as well, but I love to travel. So I met this friend. At the, we were both getting in a cab at the same time. He handed me uh, a card, and in it was $50 to go see Barbara Cook. And in it, it said, seize the need or feed the dream. I just came across the card again recently. So I went there. I, I cabbed there, and I walked back. And he, uh, a friend of mine who was a stagehand for years on Broadway told me, Tip the maitre d' when you get there. Tip the, sir, the the host that will see you later. Tip him twenty dollars, and he will come um, and he will maybe give you a better seat. So I only had fifty, and I gave him twenty. And I was standing with I don't know who he was. He was a reviewer and his uncle, and we stood and talked for a long time about uh, Barbara Cook and the fact that I'm a soprano and I'd never been in New York as an, as auditioning. And um, then the maitre d' or the, the host sat us next to each other. So all through this brilliant, wonderful Barbara Cook show, this gentleman was whispering in my ear, this is from the apple tree. You need to buy the CD of the apple tree. You will love it. This song is from Fiorello. This song is from, you know, it was just wonderful. But he gave me Planted These Seeds and I knew years later, years earlier, maybe 1995, 96, that I wanted to sing some of these songs down the road. And I went the next day to uh, Colony Records, which is not there anymore. Or, yeah, Colony. Uh, walked like 15 blocks on my lunch hour to buy this CD. And it was at the time, it was $35. Now you can get it on Amazon for $5.99. But uh, it, I was immersed. I learned every single word. And over the years, I realized that a lot of the material that I was finding on uh, Blossom Deary albums and in my favorite musicals were all written by Mr. Harnick. And that's how I knew that I was going to put together a show of his work. That's how that came about. That's an amazing story. I want to show that CD cover as well. There it is. That's my CD. An evening with Jennifer Roberts. What was, what was it like working on that CD? I'm sure that was a labor of love for you, huh? It was a labor of love, yes. I had um, done a, the first show that I did with Mr. Firth, Ted Firth, back around 2014. I had done some shows before and I reached out to Ted and I said, do you want to do a show? Because I kept running into friends that said, I saw your last show. I still have your first CD, which was a live sh of the show that we had done years earlier. You should do another one. And this kept coming to me. So I said, let's just do a show. So Andy Gale, Ted Firth, and I put the show together. Andy was my director. And then Rit Hen was the bassist. And we did it a few times. Not a lot of people came because nobody in New York knew who I was. But people kept telling me, you need to record this. And then I did some work over the next two years that paid quite a bit. And I realized that now I need to start the CD because it's not inexpensive to do, a, to do a CD. So we jumped in the studio. I went in. It was on November 20th. Uh, Steve Doyle and Ted and I did a show together. At, oh, thank you. At Don't Tell Mama. And uh, Michael made it. And um, 
the next weekend we went into the studio and uh, we had two full days, but I caught some kind of a virus. So I kind of sang scratch vocals. Oh, you're very welcome all. But I, I uh, took it on myself, produced everything myself, paid for everything myself. I worked with Sean Swinney, he might be watching tonight. It was his recording studio and uh, he's excellent. And we worked every single step of the way together. So the first two days, uh, Ted and Steve and I went through the whole show. And then I had them do vocal, uh, backup vocals, which they didn't really want to do. They were afraid to sing, but I'm like, please, please, please. So we did it. And then uh, fast forward, we were going to get together in January. And then Steve took a around the world tour or something and he was gone. So we brought in in early February, uh, Tom Hubbard, who's also a wonderful bassist. And he came in and, had, and we finished the two or three songs that we hadn't done. Then I had them start doing voiceovers. And then I brought different friends in like Tom Wopat and um, some friends in New York, Lance Roberts, he's on my CD. Brought them in to do voiceovers and it was really fun. And then I realized that I wanted to include Sidney Meyer. So I called him and I said, emailed him, can you please do a voice from my CD? He's like, sure, come over. So I recorded one of the funniest things on the CD of him in the basement of Don't Tell Mama doing some funny voiceovers. And then fast forward, I'm working on the road and doing other things. As when I could get back to New York and go into the studio, we do more of the re-singing or we do more of the editing. And this was a process that took two years, but I'm so proud of it. Um, just because uh, my hand was in every single thing and it was really fun to bring it to fruition from the concept oh, yeah. to the actual finished product. And then what's been most rewarding is that it's really getting great airplay and great reviews. It's getting a lot of uh, continuous airplay from some really wonderful radio programs. Mm. That is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That is, do you see uh, more coming down the <clears throat> pike, more in development? Oh yes, oh yes. I want to do I want to do a Sheldon Harmonic CD, but um, I just did a fundraiser a couple weeks ago, and I was really blessed. I have to say that I know it's a difficult time for everybody. I did not fundraise or ask for any donations for the first one, but I realized this has already been six months. My work is gone pretty much. If I wait until I can fund it all myself, Mr. Harnick may not be here. He's ninety six. So I put in some. Uh, I put in a Facebook fundraiser. A friend of mine said you should do Facebook. Everybody's already connected. And people gave what they could, uh, but amazingly, she would be embarrassed if I share this, but the wife of my acting, my first director in college, actually when I went to Wayne State, uh, the very first play I was, I was putting was uh, Christmas Carol, and he was the director. His wife worked in the office. They happened to come to, and I did a ton of musicals while I was at, at Wayne State, but then they happened to be in New York when I was doing one of my cabaret shows in New York, and they came. And he since passed away last year, um, but she ended up giving me five hundred dollars toward my CD, oh, my wonderful. future CD. And I share that because she would be embarrassed. But that's somebody that I've known since uh, college. But um, yes, we're going to fundraise. I'm going to uh, just count on getting better work soon so that I can get in the studio and do Sheldon's uh, CD. But that's the next one, and then we'll do other ones, obviously. But. A lot of people, you mentioned Tom Wolpat <clears throat> earlier, yes. and uh, look what we dug up in our research department. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this. It's well, cool. this, yeah, it's really cool. Well, it's really funny because I would be in New York working for many years on my birthday, and I went to see City of Angels, and I did not even know um, who was in it. I never watched Dukes of Hazard, which I love to kid him about. But I went to see City of Angels and I told the man at the ticket booth back when, before all the stuff you could do online, it's my birthday, I'm equity, I'd love to see the show. And so he gave me a, a, like a six row center seat. I paid full price, which was maybe 80 back then, but it was a phenomenal show. And I, I can see him very clearly. And I'm like, boy, he's really talented. This is really good. So a year later in New York, I'm seeing guys and dolls, but this time I was in the balcony and I'm like, that's great, it was him again. And then I just moved to the west side of Michigan and I sent my resume out to different theaters and I got a response from them and they said, can you please come and audition for us in Chicago? So I went into Chicago, I auditioned and then I did the general and then they called me in to sing for him about three weeks later, uh, which would have been quite a while ago now. But I went in and he was the director. He had just done it on Broadway, so I'd seen it. And I prepared both of the women's roles because I wasn't sure which one I was being considered for, but I was being considered for Sarah Brown, which is a wonderful role. And I did that um, with him for a full three weeks. And it was just a wonderful opportunity. We had a great time and uh, I loved it because he's, you know, his, his caliber was way up here because he'd already done the show on Broadway for a year and a half. And it was phenomenal. 
Mm. So Somebody, that's, that, that's, that's a good, that was, yeah, Tom Orpat and uh, Michael Feinstein. Let's take a look at that shot. That's a great one. Tell about this uh, meeting. All right. So ironically, my CD was nominated for a, a Mac Award in 2019. Yeah, thank you. It was really cool. And uh, so I was going into New York just for a couple of days to see the show. And Ralph Lemkin wrote and said, did you know that Sheldon and Ted Firth, my, my musical director, are work and Sheldon and Ted are working with Michael Feinstein at uh, Carnegie Hall the day after the uh, Mac Awards. And I'm like, I don't know if I can stay. I don't know if I can change my ticket. And um, so I realized that I could. So I wrote Ted, I've never asked a favor before, but I asked if he could maybe get me a, a comp or a discounted ticket to see the show because I just had met Sheldon two months earlier. He'd come to my show end of January. That's like a month. And so um, I didn't hear from him. I didn't hear from him. I went ahead and booked my hotel an extra day. I knew that I could already fly out the next day. And um, and then I went to the show and I had written Mr. Harnig that morning that I'm going to be there and I'm going to try to get backstage. I'll try to stop by. So to see this brilliant show, it was, it was fabulous. It was Jewish composers and they were all brilliant. And I went up after the concert to shake uh, Ted's hand and my bass player Phil Balombi was there and we, we shook hands. And then I was looking for Marianne Lapinto who should be watching. She uh, is. And someone told me uh, she went upstairs backstage and I'm like, oh, well, I'm gonna go backstage. And she said to me, are you on the guest list? I'm not. And I said, oh, I doubt it, but I'll ask. And so I said, um, he goes, well, what's your name? And I said, Jennifer Roberts. And he said, oh, you're on the list. So somebody, we think Mr. Harnick put me on the guest list to go backstage at Carnegie Hall. And because of all that, I met Michael Feinstein. I met Marilyn Lester, uh, Danny Backer. Uh, we're all backstage. Um, and Sandy McGraw was there. Yep, she took that pic. Marianne took that photo. And um, it was just a really, really cool because I've loved his work for years. But that was just kind of all kind of happened really fast, um, just a month after I'd met him. And he mm. remembered me, his wife remembered me right away, Mr. Harnick, and it was great to meet um, Michael Feinstein as well. Fantastic. We're gonna go back to some pictures, but first <clears throat> I wanna treat our fabulous viewership around the world to some of your amazing dulcet tones. And we have a wonderful clip here that we're gonna add in every time we say goodbye. Tell us about this one. Uh, I know that's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Oh, I love it. Actually, somebody found this uh, wonderful uh, uh, DJ in London, pulled this off of YouTube and played it on his station on his program a few weeks ago. That was a thrill. But uh, the symphony that I worked with in Detroit, I did three or four years of classical material, and then we did a couple of years of pops. So this was a Cole Porter night, and I did a lot of his material, but this is my favorite. And what we love about this one is the period, the arrangement sounds very much like the period that it would have been written in, which would have been the 30s. So that's really cool. Mm, and, and the setting where this is? Oh, this is in Detroit? Yeah. I'm not sure which room, because I, I sang a few, but this was with the Southfield Symphony, and I looked them up recently, and they're no longer there, but they were there for years. Um, and, and as a wonderful uh, symphony orchestra. And I did some outdoor um, fireworks programs with them in seven years in different facilities in Southfield, Michigan. But this was great. It was a wonderful symphony. The audience was always very receptive and thrilled to be there. And, and this was a really wonderful opportunity to sing this song. All right, everybody. It's time to hear the beautiful voice of our illustrious guest, acclaimed actress and singer, Jennifer Roberts. Every time we say Goodbye. I can't wait for the audience to hear this. I was previewing this earlier today, and it really is absolutely beautiful. So Thanks. here it is for you right now, everybody. Absolutely enjoy this. And here we go.
Don't you love the internet? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Let's see. We might be able to bring that back. Sometimes things are just flaky. Let's see if we could start that again. Let's see if we can bring it back. I'm sure we can. It's such a beautiful song. It's worth it. Absolutely. Let's see if we can bring that back. We'll revise it or update it and see what we can do here. There's got to be a way to bring that back. All right. All right. Let's see if we can get that there. Because it is definitely... There it is. All right. <clears throat> Take two. That is absolutely stunning. That is, oh my God. Thank you. It's there. so funny because we I did these things and then I never looked at the videos and I forgot all about them. So that's what the pandemic has done for me, bringing these things back and people are really enjoying them. So 
Oh, lots of wonderful comments coming in from Thank literally you all. all around the world. Amazing and oh. uh, even more beautiful when we hear all of it and the stories, of course, with it. That's Marilyn in Wichita, Thank Kansas. You. And Mary Bishop, what a beautiful song, sung beautifully. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank uh, you. Jennifer Barry, so good. Magical Jennifer. Pamela Perkle saying so glad, so pretty. Glad I'm able to tune in. Lovely voice from Kathleen in New York City. Michael Colby uh, watching on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. You look and sound beautiful. We Thank agree. You. Thank you. Crystal Nolan in Connecticut, very beautiful. Jennifer, thank you for sharing your story with us as well. You're welcome. Yeah. And Carla in South America and Brazil, oh, lots of claps yeah. from Brazil. And amazing from Crystal Nolan as well. And uh, Rini, Rini said something, so thank you, Rini. Yeah, Rini is always fantastic. And Paul is watching on Periscope. That is a gift from God to be able to use vocals like that, gifted. Thank you, Paulette. Thank you, Paula. Paula, where are you watching from? I know you're watching on our Periscope channel at Jim Messers TV, but wonder what uh, state or town or Thank country. You. Beautiful, just lovely Jennifer from Rini. Thank you, Rini. As well, and beautiful from Francis, uh, and so many more. That's really fantastic. I mean, uh, okay. you, you really, I mean, and to having the orchestral backing is like, it's tough to top, right? Isn't you know? it? I know. I can't well, believe this. Paul well, is watching. It's like Michigan night tonight. Paula on Periscope's in Michigan. <laughs> she's a friend of mine. She actually lives in Detroit. Oh, she is. Oh, great. Yeah, so that was neat. And then Rose, who was on, I don't know if she left or came. She lives in my town also. Um, Paula, I know from Detroit area. So that's neat that they turned out, uh, turned in, tuned in. And yeah. Rini, Rini had said pretty, absolutely, Thank yeah, you. and Marilyn said that was beautiful, and claps from uh -huh. uh, Renee in Iowa as well. Uh, you also wanted to perform something live special for us too, right? I have. Ralph requested People Get Ready from my CD. Oh, fantastic. For the premiere song, I sent you a video, so I can sing it for you and, and hope, fingers crossed, it goes well, or you can play that little video that I recorded, whatever you would like. Love to hear it live. Yeah, okay. if you want to. Yeah, since you're there and set up. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Bear with me. This Absolute. is the world's premiere. The world premiere. And let's toast as well, since you have your big mug. <clears throat> toast to you being on our show. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. So I'm going to turn this on. Hopefully the Bluetooth speaker is still working. Tell us uh, about the song, the back uh, story to the song. I will. So I had been asked to do your show a while ago. And... Um, I was thinking about uh, what to sing and Count Your Blessings, which is one of my favorite songs. I sang with that same symphony and I recently put it on uh, Facebook. And I thought I want to do that one, but I also would love to do a song called uh, I'll Get By, which is one of my favorite songs ever, but I haven't sung it in many years. And so I wrote my brilliant musical director, Ted Firth, and I asked him, would these go together? Because he was already going to do uh, uh, an arrangement for me or two. And he wrote back and said, I got to think about it. Um, think about it. And I said, well, the both, both of the lyrics are similar. They're different, but they both relate to hard times and poverty and so forth. So I didn't hear from him. And I kept wondering if he's going to be able to do it. And all of a sudden, I get the arrangement and the music uh, via email. So um, it's just they're, they're beautiful songs written in the golden age of, uh, of well, most of them, I think, are from musical theater. Count Your Blessings is from White Christmas. I'll Get By, I think, was just a really well-known um, pop standard back in the day. So we're going to merge them for you. Oh, beautiful. All right. Here is the extraordinary acclaimed actress and singer Jennifer Roberts here on the Jim Master Show Live. I'm going to start it again because for some reason all my volume is gone. Isn't that funny how it all works? <laughs> there you go. Once again, for an encore, the wonderful <laughs> Jennifer Roberts. The internet is a crazy place. <laughs> right. Here we go. It's been waiting all this time and now the Bluetooth is disconnected, but we know this happens. That's the way it works. It's the craziness of uh, the lovely internet and all this technology. We have so much technology that uh, 
It gets crazy sometimes. But worth the wait. Worth the wait. I hope it comes on. We hear we hear it in the background, yeah. Yep, we hear that, yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Masters, your host. <laughs> Jim, I don't know what's going on. It was like, it's been working for three days. Right. So so it's playing something now. Is that the song? Maybe it's where it's plugged in. So we hear it, but I guess you don't hear it on your end, huh? Because we actually hear some of the music underneath. Welcome, everybody, all around the world. We're being entertained by the delightful Jennifer Roberts here on the show, brilliant actress and singer. We have much more music coming up, videos, conversation. Feel free if you have a question for Jennifer, post it on YouTube or Facebook. We see all of the questions. There oh, you, go. you know what? I turned off the Bluetooth. Oh my goodness! Remember? Ah, that's right. Ah. It, it's always yeah, something. It's my... always something simple. It's never too technical. It's always something basic. Well, I've had this, I, I have two or three really good speakers, and I realize this is the best of the group. Yeah. So that you can really hear him as well as me. But before we, when we talked, I turned off Bluetooth. All right. Let's try this one more time. Absolutely. The extraordinary, incomparable, lovely, beautiful, and talented Jennifer Roberts, live on the Gym Master Show Live. With, blue, with Bluetooth and all. The orchestra, they didn't show up tonight, so we're going to rely on the Bluetooth. <laughs> and technology. Well, I can just sing it without, without you being able to hear Ted. But that, or would you want us to play yeah, the video? All right. You, you got it? One more time. Oh, okay. Three, I'm two, sorry. and one. No, that's okay. No problem at all. We're worth the wait. I'll get by as long as I have you. Though there'll be rain and darkness too, I'll not complain. I'll see it through. Poverty may come to me, that's true. But what care I say I'll get by as long as I have. When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep. And I fall asleep counting my blessings. When my bankroll is getting small, I think of when I had none at all. I fall asleep counting my blessings. I think about a nursery and I picture curly heads. And one by one I count them as they slumber in their beds. If you're worried Count your blessings instead of sheep, and you'll fall asleep counting your blessings. Poverty 
may come to me that's true but what care i say i'll get by as long as i Absolutely beautiful. That was totally worth the wait. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> we yeah. all have we all have to work hard for our supper, don't we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> I tell you. It's like but you know, even on stage or in a television studio, a radio studio, or film set, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that can happen. But once those lights come on and you're on you know, there could be fires and floods behind the curtain, but you're out there and you just do what you, you got to do. do. You do what you got to do. That's what we do. We're, we are what they call folks professionals. That's right. Well, <laughs> That's I, waited, I waited to put that out there for your show. I appreciate that. A world, sure. another, another world exclusive here in the Gym Master Show Live, which is absolutely amazing. We've had so many people do that, and I really appreciate you doing that, Jennifer. Lots of claps from Kathleen in New York Thank City, you. as well as Crystal in Connecticut. Thank you. you know, it's a lot harder to do to a computer than it is to sing to an to, to oh. do an audience. Tell Thank me you. about it. Absolutely. Lovely Jennifer. Ralph Francis says, <clears> an absolutely beautiful Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, magical Jennifer, oh, thank, thank you, you as well. And Michael Colby watching on the YouTube channel. Michael, good to see you. Welcome. Perfect oh. medley for these times. That's how I picked it. That's exactly what I thought. <clears throat> Very beautiful voice from Renee oh, in Iowa. You. Absolutely uh, amazing voice. Oh. Beautiful Ernestine in uh, North Carolina. And um, my folks might be watching in South Carolina. Oh, welcome, South Carolina as well. Uh, it's all a learning. It was great. Marianne mm -hmm. watching. Good to see you, Marianne. We love when you're here. Claps. Oh, and thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Mary Bishop. She's got everything in there, guys. She's got notes and microphones and hearts and claps and faces and <laughs> all kinds of cool emojis in there as well. Hey, why not, right? Got to celebrate life. Uh, Julia, claps oh, and a caring face. That's your sister. That's my sister. Hello, Julia. Is she in Michigan as well? No, she's in Oregon. Oregon. Ah, fantastic. I don't get to see them often enough, so hello. Paula on Periscope. Paula. Magnificent. Bravo. Thank you very much. Christine in North Carolina. Very expressive and gorgeous. Thank I love this song from White Christmas. Yeah. Thank that, you. That Counting Your Blessings is a beautiful song. I'm a big Christmas music fan, buff collector. Well, I love it. That video that I made for you, I only had had the music for a day or two, but then I've been singing it almost every day numerous times, but then when you do it to a computer, it has a life of its own, you know? <laughs> Doesn't it really? Yeah, and it's, it's, got a, it's, got a, feel. it's got a whole other feel, absolutely. And you have it there, and what the heck, you know what? We'll show that too, so they'll get a bonus. Let's, let's, uh, you got oh, Marilyn. Why? Yeah, why not? Uh, two for one. Um, you got hearts and claps from Marilyn in Wichita, Thank you, Kansas. Ma Rose says, love you, Jennifer. Great oh, stories. Yes, okay. we always have time. We make time on the show for good stories. This isn't, you know, wham, bam here on this show. We like to really get into some good core conversation. So well, beautiful and moving from Pamela Perkle in Can you, Pamela. Kansas City. I know Pamela well now because you talked about Pamela Perkle the other night. Don't you love her name? Everybody loves her name. Everybody. I can't remember who the guest was. Oh, it was uh, Pepe um, Castro. Pep yeah. Pepe. Yeah, my oh, friend sure. Pepe. Yeah, because I, I, I had said to her, I said, I envisioned with that name, Pamela Perkle, as this wonderful woman who lives 
you know, in a neighborhood where when the new person moves in, she comes over from across the street with a bunt cake and a welcome basket. And she <laughs> says, hi, I'm Pamela Perkle. And I'm with the Perkles across the street and we welcome you to our neighborhood. And then she said, you know what? You got me to a T because that's what I do. <laughs> Pamela, friends. Well, yeah, absolutely. Kansas City proud. Priscilla is here, beautiful voice. Oh, Priscilla okay. Sarah watching on YouTube. Welcome on the Gym Master channel on YouTube. Rini Katz, of course, beautiful arrangement, Thank beautifully you. sung as well. So why don't we share um, that other version <clears throat> that you did with our audience so they can see that as well? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I sent in two and I don't know which one you're gonna pick, but uh, I had fun. I had fun doing them as if it was an audition because you know I have to do a lot of from home self taped stuff. So I kind of just put it. <laughs> I love that expression. No, because I'm not flattering. <laughs> that's that's just <laughs> that's just that's just where it paused. That's She's hilarious. like, I want to sing, I want to sing, but I'm frozen in time. Please let me sing. <laughs> yeah. So I did this in the sense of an audition, uh, you know. Uh, in a small space here with a little bit of lighting and Ted's arrangement, which wasn't probably very loud, but you get so a this was a self tape, one of the self tapes, right? Yes. For yeah. your show in case I did not sing live and I'll ah. put it on YouTube later. Oh, so this you did just for us too. Just for you. So we heard you do it live and now we get to hear that what you created just for us. That's beautiful. We appreciate that. So then we definitely must show this. Let's <laughs> let's just share for your this. show. Just for the Gym Master Show Live. You're the best, Jennifer. You're a <laughs> you're a great guest and viewer. We love it. <laughs> Double lovity. Yeah, let's uh let's enjoy that and share that with everybody here Started on the show. Started at the beginning though. Yeah, is that the beginning? No, that I, is not the beginning. You know what happens? I guess the way you know the way video is, it just picks its own sort of start point, and that's where it started. <laughs> that's hilarious. Very. Well, that's your acting chops. That's well, very. That's right? expression. That means this is a good. This is a good passionate version. Then that's good. Okay. That's it. Okay. Here we go. As it cues up. <laughs> This is nowhere. It's not on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere. It was just for your show. So this is exclusive just for us. Okay. All right. Don't you love that little buffering circle? I tell you, it's like, it's like that. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. It's there. We've got it coming. So how long did it take you to make this particular uh, clip? Oh, I, I just spent a couple hours and I did four takes, five takes, six takes. I don't know. Um, did you? Maybe an hour. I can't remember. I, I have to, I get requests to do regular audition things, and so I thought I'm going to do this in that same in that same mode. Here it, here it comes. Those are real crickets in the background. Oh really? Wow. <laughs> here we go. I'll get by as long as I. There'll be rain and darkness too. I'll not complain. I'll see it through. Poverty may come to me. What can I say? I'll get by as long as I have you. When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of shame. Sleep. 
Really beautiful. That was really, really beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. It's tough to watch yourself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that is. Uh, Julia says, Thanks for blessing us Aww. tonight. And Marianne says, The same. Absolutely beautiful from Crystal. Um, Jen is Zen. You know, when Jen is Zen, it's a good night. It's a good place. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful from Ann uh, Wozniak and uh, Ralph says, yes, just for you, Jim, extra gift. We appreciate that. Beautiful voice and uh, on and on. We love when our viewers uh, respond and I love to show the guests and myself the wonderful interaction with our viewers. Yeah, <laughs> so awesome. beautiful from Ernestine in uh, North Carolina. Uh, Renee in Iowa, very, very nice. Marianne, great as well. Pamela Perkle, I've learned this year that it is easier to live in gratitude than fear. Love the encore. That was the encore. So we do encores here. So we gave them a double, uh, double pleasure there. Uh, thank you. Such a blessing to Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas, uh, as well. We have another song that we want to uh, share with everybody, and let's see if we can find. That Music is one. very healing. Yes, it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And very encouraging when things are not easy. What kind of music do you like to listen to uh, as well? You might not listen necessarily to always what you perform. There might be you might be somebody who listens to all kinds of different music. What do you like to listen to? Jazz piano. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. But I listen to I listen to everything. When I'm looking yeah. for new material, I listen to all kinds of vocalists and shows. Um, but when I, when I want to chill out or do things around the house, I like to listen to piano jazz. You like instrumental. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love, love, love instrumental. Uh, Marsha Line in Massachusetts you. says she's got thank goose pimples oh, as she watches on YouTube. You. Francis says, what a blessing that was. Thank you. Oh, you sing beautifully. You. Kathleen in New York City. So talented. We agree. We agree. <laughs> Christine, just as beautiful hearing this lovely med melody. A medley for a second time. I was more emotional on the encore. A blessing having you on the show tonight. Double lovity. We love that. The highest uh, compliment, double lovity. That's right. I tell you, it really, really is. Now, this one we have here, so we can get this one set up here as well. This one, let me just get that set up. There it is. And this one, I believe, we can open up this one here. So let's see. Do you see that airing? It was a problem, it says. Yeah. So that's... I wonder why. You know what it is? Because it's the wrong kind of file. It's we. It says a movie file, and it likes uh, everything as an MP4. It plays things easier. The streaming service plays things easier as an no, MP4. Because I have every, I have everything in both, actually. You have everything in both. Uh, yeah, MP4 is what it really likes. So let's see if we might be able to play around with this and we can get this to, to do what we want it to do. It wants us to download it, but then it doesn't want to uh, necessarily open it. Come on, open this thing up. We we want to hear more. That is. Um, where do I go from here? That particular one. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a good from the one Sheldon Harding show. So I love see. that let's... song. Well, while you're let's doing see. that, I will tell you about um, where do I go from here? <laughs> the song I found on Mr. Harnick's um, Hidden Treasures album. It was 
written for Fiorello, the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And it was cut because they thought that it made the character weak, so it never it never aired. And I know people have done recordings of it, but I discovered it on his Hidden Treasures album, and I, I hit the floor. It was so emotional. It's a beautiful song, mm. which is how I chose most of the songs on my Sheldon Harnick, uh, in my Sheldon Harnick show, were, were songs that moved me. Was well, songs that move you. Moved so then that's, what it's, uh, that's what it's all about, yeah. So we have it here, and let's see if we can get it to play. It really, really wants the MP4. I see it, but you don't see it right now, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. But I know uh, you can't do YouTube. It's on YouTube, but you can't do YouTube. I know. We could, uh, as long as, you know, how they are with the copyright uh, and all that nonsense. But It's up which... there. It's been on YouTube for a long time. So let's see if we can find it from there. Yeah, it's uh, it really wants it as an MP4, which is how it should be. So I can't believe I turned the Bluetooth off though, because remember we were talking about anything on the phone, and I'm like, well, let me get everything disconnected. Oh, brother. So well, it, it now is it under you? If we go right in, let's. If you're right in Jennifer Roberts, where do I go from here? It'll come right up. Perfect. We're gonna go right to you, and. Um, while we do that, tell us what you had for dinner tonight. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> oh, I had, you too. I had me. a lovely, healthy sh uh, smoothie around 4 o'clock, and then I had little crackers with cheese and a little bit of, um, I know you're not supposed to do cheese, and a little bit of ham, and then I thought I'll have dinner later, so I haven't eaten. What kind of smoothie meat. was it? Everybody wants to know, you know. <laughs> well, this was a good one. Banana, frozen strawberries and blueberries, ginger. I little, put a little bit of um, turmeric in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, kale, arugula, and some other fruit, I can't remember, and a little bit of avocado and yogurt. Mm, very, very nice. Very, Thanks very to get nice. all those fruit and veggies in together. You know, you've watched this show. They love when we talk about food on this show. <laughs> they absolutely love it. We have it here. It's amazing how I'm the uh, host, executive producer, the technical director, the editor, the lighting guy, the makeup person, the set designer, Unreal. We actually have the YouTube clip. And uh, if it's the same, if it's already on YouTube, it would be the same result anyway. So we're good to go here. And uh, we will play it now. Where do this, I go from here? Where were you when you performed this one? This was Don't Tell Mama, and uh, this is the second time I did the show. But uh, Ted Firth wrote all the arrangements, but it's uh, John Weber on piano, and it's Steve Doyle on bass. So this mm. was 2018, only the second time we did it with a guest pianist, the wonderful John Weber. Uh, Rini says she's going to get your CD. Oh, yes. Oh, bless your Very heart. Very nice. And, and Jennifer always asks all the guests, do you prefer the ocean or the mountains? <laughs> you know that question she always asks. She likes to know. I'm an ocean person because so I grew up, you know, on the coast. And so I love the mountains, but I do, you know, I, I love the mountains and going in the mountains. But the first choice for me is always the ocean. But how about you? I would imagine being in Michigan, it must be the... Oh, she, so how, <laughs> so hi, I'm Jim. Welcome. Uh, mountains or ocean for Jennifer Barry? I think oceans. I have photos all over Facebook from different oceans that I visited, but Very I love nice. the mountains too, but I love yeah. views, anything with a gorgeous view. And usually and the ocean has stunning views. The ocean, there's the rhythm of the tide yeah, and the so sun peaceful. setting and yeah, I'm always, you got to drag me out of the ocean. One time we were in Florida with the family cause we have family there and, uh, I was swimming and the family was getting ready to leave and they're like, okay, Jim, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, why are we leaving? Why are we leaving? Because we had been there for hours and they're like, because it's starting to rain. And I'm like, but I'm already wet. I'm in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> but of course the lightning in Florida, you don't want to mess with that. When no. they have lightning in Florida, it's uh, crazy stuff. And uh, Rini says, Ted Firth, amazing as is John Weber. Yes. They're both brilliant. Good stuff. So we're going to sample this one here. We're going to share this with everybody so they can enjoy this. And we have it here. We did our live digging on the spot. Where do I go from here with the extraordinary Jennifer Roberts? I hope everybody's having fun tonight. This is all about levity. So you're getting a levity. chance to have fun with us as much as be entertained. Here we go. I know it's true, the signs are all too clear, but loving him the way I do, where do I go from here? The time is coming. The moment well 
nice very nice beautiful oh, beautiful and michael colby says right away you do this song so definitively you know there's been at least one production of fiorello that put the song back in i know and i read that they didn't feel that it that it succeeded uh the second time they put it back in too but thank you michael wrote when he saw my sheldon harnick show he's very knowledgeable that he was particularly moved by my rendition of this. I remember that, Michael Colby, so thank you. He came to our show at Pangea when we did it there. Ah, very, very nice. Let's go through oh, more comments coming in. Very nice, Jennifer. Your voice is like no oh. other. Very unique, magical Jennifer as well. Um, we have some more photos we want to go through, too, that are really, really glorious. I love this shot. <clears throat> oh. Tell us about when what was happening here and where you were. That's when I was singing, uh, same symphony, different building. I think we did this at a different, uh, maybe the pavilion, Southfield Pavilion. But this was me singing Count My Blessings with the symphony. And that was a beautiful arrangement. Mm, very, very nice. Yeah, and I did a lot of, uh, lot of Irving Berlin that night. Oh, yeah, abs absolutely. Now, we showed the, this a little bit earlier. Tell us more about this. So this is a program or the uh, advertising for the uh, Sheldon Harnick show that I created with Ted Firth and uh, Lance Roberts, who we mentioned as my director for this. I asked Lance, my old friend, he kept coming to my other show and gave me great feedback and support. So I asked him if he would direct my Sheldon Harnick show. So this is the advertising uh, poster that a friend of mine, Michael Burns, created for me. And this is just four of uh, Sheldon Harnick's many shows, the posters. She loves me, The Rothschild, The Apple Tree and Fiddler. But I do a lot of obscure songs of his in my show. And that's what my passion is, finding these hidden gems and, and putting them out there. So I do some songs that people have never heard before or rarely yes, heard, which is boy. fun. So, and then here are you now sort of swinging over to the acting side of things. This is uh, you on set with Conviction. Tell us about this. Oh, yes. When the film incentives came to Michigan, uh, which would have been 2008 or nine. All of a sudden, uh, there was a great opportunity to audition. And I, this was the first or second one that I auditioned for. And what was wonderful about this film, unlike all the other ones I auditioned for, I think I'd done a couple before uh, this one, but I, I got a text, I'll never forget, I got an email around noon and I had a migraine, which I never get, but I have them once a year, mm. saying, we sent you the script for a Hillary Swank film and I, you, you're reading for two roles. And I'll never forget this because I wasn't feeling well. I didn't get up to four or so to listen to the email or to listen to the phone message other than I heard Hillary Swank. And then I started learning it. And the next day I had to be in Detroit to audition for it. And so what was wonderful is they gave me the opportunity 
to work on a larger lawyer part and then a smaller role. So when I walked in, the casting director, Carrie Ray, said, uh, I don't know if you heard, but they've already cast this lawyer part, but this director wants to see what you can do. So he wants you to, to do the larger scene for the audition. So I got to do the larger attorney scene and then, mm. um, and then I left and I felt really good about it, but I didn't hear anything for a while, which is weird because typically you'll hear pretty fast. But I felt really good about the audition. And then let's say this was in, I don't remember, September, October, November. I didn't hear anything again until January. And I was walking around uh, Washington, DC, around Georgetown with some friends working in town. And I got this call. They want to see you, but you forgot to audition for the smaller role. So can you get to Detroit tomorrow and audition? I said, no, I can't get back into home until Monday. And they said, well, let's find out. The casting director said, yes, if you can get here Monday evening, I'll, I'll, I'll get you in. So typical, typical actor scene, you hear about these things all the time. I get a call or I get, I land in Detroit or land in Grand Rapids. My friends are waiting with, for my car with me, uh, waiting for me with my car to forward to Detroit. And I get stuck in a several hour long um, traffic jam. So I don't get even Detroit for two or three hours after I was supposed to. But long story short, she still saw me and uh, I did it a couple of times and I got a call the next morning that I, that, I, that I won the role. What was wonderful was working with uh, Hilary Swank and Sam Rockwell and Minnie Driver and uh, Tony, Tony Goodwin, uh, Goldwyn was the director and uh, Peter Gallagher was in the film and I was with them on set for a couple of days. It was really exciting. And then after that, I got a lot of callbacks for other huge directors and, and uh, roles, but I didn't book anything else. But the opportunity is to get in and be seen by these directors and, and be strong enough to get the callback. Because when it comes to callbacks, sometimes it's a look, it's your type, it's your height, it's your age, it's, you know. So to me, the honor is to get the callback. So that was a blessing. And then sometimes they have all that set and then they change it all and say, no, we actually don't want that. Now we want this whole other thing. <laughs> uh, right. You, 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 and I have done several things since then, but that was a huge break. And uh, that, was, that was the beginning of that was the beginning of the film incentives. And uh, that was yeah, I went to the Toronto Film Festival to see that one, too. That's cool. And then, yeah. That's fantastic. Here's another great shot here. Let's take a look at this one. I love this one here, Jennifer. Oh, that's. Probably me singing Mein Air Marquis from the Fledermaus Mozart. And where was this happening? Same place, Southfield Same Symphony. Place. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. This would you, have been. You look, you look so in the zone there. It's a, just a beautiful shot. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this was a thrill because this is a very difficult material. Mozart's uh, Mozart's Alleluia I have performed oh, a couple of times yeah. and the Fledermaus Mein Air Marquis. I think it, this one goes up to a high C. And so the joy for me is that I actually hit it. No, this one's a D or a D flat, I think. And so that's the end of the song, which means I successfully hit the notes. So that was kind of cool. Absolutely. We've got another great photo here. This, I think, is the same thing, just a different angle. Or is this different? Uh, same thing? Yes. No, yeah. it's probably the same song. I'm not sure, but probably. Very, very nice. Now, was there something else you wanted to perform for us as well while we're here? If you want me to, keep, if you would like me to do People Get Ready from my CD, oh, I can attempt to do it. Oh, we'd love that. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah, that would be fantastic. All right, so hopefully there's no technical glitch because I did not turn anything off. <laughs> and again, it's very different singing to a, it's very different singing to a, a computer the CD. screen. Yes. And so this is the yeah. final song on the CD. I love the cover, too, because it's like you're saying, come with me and I will entertain you this evening. I love the way you're, you know, your hand is stretched out to the audience. That yeah. is really, really terrific. So this was cool. What I did was I had to do the CD on a budget. So the recording of the CD was, was not inexpensive. Everything was expensive. My musicians gave me a deal, but it still wasn't uh, inexpensive. So for the artwork... I took video footage from one of the recordings that Michael Lee Stever did for me, and I took snapshots. So this is Ted and I doing a song called Movie Star that's from our show, and it was the perfect uh, photo for the CD perfect. cover. Really, really nice. It was ideal. It was a very smart <clears throat> move. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Here we People go. People get ready. People get ready. Once again, the extraordinary. Jennifer Roberts, getting all ready, oh. getting in the zone to perform for you live here on the Gym Master Show live exclusively. We're having a wonderful night here. I just love Jennifer.
We all do. And here we go. People get ready. There's a train a coming. Don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. People get ready. There's a train to Jordan picking up passengers from coast to coast. Faith is key. Open the doors and board them. There's room for all among the love the most. I think she's frozen in time there. <laughs> I think so. She just sort of froze there. Uh, so I'm sure that will re-energize on its own on her end. Yeah, she disappeared. Oh, boy. Something on her end got her. Yeah, she froze. I know. It's crazy. The, the Internet. You could watch CNN. You could watch CBS. You could watch. And I watch them all. And. It happens there, too. It's just the wonderful Internet around the world. Uh, something must have happened on her end. And um, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Yes, she froze again. Promoting other shows. I love that song, Heard It by Seal, but you're singing it very good also. Yeah, she just flew the coop, but she's probably, she knows to go back into the uh, links. I told her if anything were to happen on her end, just go back into the links. But keep those comments. Sounded great until then. I know. It happens, it happens, it happens. But uh, she's got an amazing story and an amazing voice, doesn't she? And she's so, I love her energy and her spirit. She rolls with everything as well. Double hearts from uh, Renee as, uh, as our illustrious guest figures out her way to get back in. We, 
If I was away, I could just like rope her back in or, or like a fishing line, whoosh, send it out to Michigan and just bring her back. But the internet does not work that way. This is not like satellite technology. Hand clapping, toe tapping, really a great song. I mean, that was a great choice of a song. Uh, Michael says on YouTube, people get ready. Jennifer Roberts, musical love train is hitting the tracks. Jump on board. Love you. And wow, that's one groovy, sassy, vivaciously vibrant cut. Love it. And you. Wow, that's cool. What a <laughs> That's a fantastic comment. We will keep that if she can get herself back into the uh, program here. She just needs to... Uh, she just needs to click back on the link we sent her, and then she can get back in. Um, love this. People get ready. Faith is key. Yes. And I know, and that's Pamela Perkle watching in Kansas City, and Carla watching in Brazil. Cool. I love this song. I've always loved that song, People Get Ready. It's just a really good, feel-good song. Absolutely. Jennifer says, I just love Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Jennifer loves Jennifer, absolutely. Good stuff. I know she was having issues with her Bluetooth, and I should think she was using her Bluetooth for the audio, for the music. So we'll have to see um, if she can get back in. All she needs to do, if you can hear me in Michigan, just click back on the link we emailed you, and then you can come back in. Just click on it, and you'll be back. Jim, I've been Jennifer's official man behind the camera for a few years now. Love the dame. And guess what? The dame that you love, Michael Stever, the dame is back. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. My internet in the other room went out. The whole unit went out. I'm like, what the heck? It must have been the high C. I doubt you said what the heck. <laughs> I did. I get down and I go, what's going on? And it says I have no internet connection. I went to the other room and it was red as in not working. Isn't that unbelievable how this all happens? Uh, it yeah. doesn't care who you are, where you are, what it is. It just does what the heck it wants. I think what's happening, you know, is that since like March, the whole world is using the internet. So I don't think that the systems themselves are... I think there's such an overload of everybody's on the internet now, just watching videos and doing whatever, working on the internet and Zoom meetings and everything, that it's so overloaded uh, and it's so dependent on, you know, Wi-Fi signals are very flaky. It's like whatever goes on in the air mm -hmm. and it just, it happens. Well, but, did you hear uh, the end of my song or did it cut out before No, it, it cut out with this wonderful expression. Bummer, because I hit the high. I hit the high note like it was lovely. Darn it, it was really jamming. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. It just the whole, it said I have no internet, and then I kept trying to get on, and then I went to the other room, and it was red, as in it went out. And then uh, I was going to do wireless hotspot, and then it went green, so I'm back. Oh, bummer! That was a good ending to that song. Nothing you can do a cappella, huh? The last sentence. <laughs> yeah, I can end it. I can end it. Um, yeah, I don't know what blew it. Maybe it was the maybe it was the, the note. The, blue, I don't know. the Bluetooth, maybe or something flaky. Yeah, we were. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, I'll end the song for you, and then I'm going to tell you what happened to my internet today before before we met up. It, it's crazy. It makes fools of everybody, doesn't it? It makes yeah. fools of everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. here we go. Get on board. Wow. I mean, that was worth it. Forget about the music. It was nice to hear it a cappella. I mean, uh, I think all the windows here just smashed. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, that, was, that wasn't high. It was, it's a high belt. It was but, a, um, is it live or is it Memorex? Remember that? Yeah, I yeah. do. And um, some great comments coming in here. Oh, uh, Jennifer well, thank you all. Zen. And um, I'll raise you 10, Mary. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That is very well, funny. Well, Michael, Colby, thank you for being here. Everybody, thank you for still being here. That's awesome. Oh, absolutely. Really? We've got here a good group. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tell you what happened with my internet earlier today. I know you wanted hardwired. Thank you. So I have new, relatively new internet. So I went to connect the cable today to hardwired for this interview. So it would be, you know, more solid. Thank you, Jen. 
Zen Zen. And um, it started to smoke. I went upstairs and found an old connector that connects uh, internet DSL, whatever, with my laptop. And it started to smoke. So I pulled it out. And for a while, I had nothing at all. I thought I had no internet. I was going to have to do this um, wireless hotspot. So I called the guy that had installed me. And he goes, I can't come now. So I, he said, call my boss. And I called his boss. And I said, it was smoking. It's not working. I have an interview. It has to be live. So um, I, I left it off for a while, turned it back on. And it finally, finally started working, thankfully. Just in time, Just huh? in time, but I'm not sure why it went out. It must have been the high, high note of the ending and the Bluetooth. I don't know. But to I, knock out the whole internet. I bet, yeah, it happens. I tell you, it, it, you could be talking to the Pope and it doesn't matter. It could happen. Uh, mm -hmm. I bet when it was smoking, you were smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I could not believe it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It always happens at the craziest of times, right? But I think so So many people are so used to it now. Like I was saying, when you were off, I said you could watch the major networks, you could watch any channel, and they have that. At least you don't have, you know, when you watch like the news broadcasts, sometimes you, they're interviewing somebody major, and all of a sudden their face gets distorted, and all of a sudden it's pixels, and it's like... And like, that's a major person and you don't even see the face. It, yeah. It's just the technology. Yeah, it's just the technology. Yeah. Uh, everybody loves that song. How does that song speak to you? People get ready. I mean, you did a phenomenal version, uh, acapella and with the uh, musical accompaniment. Uh, to me, everybody says it's a song for the times, but at the time, Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. You know Kathleen. what I love too, and I was saying this when you were, uh, you know, getting going back into the link and everything. I said what's very cool and special about you is you roll with the punches, and that comes from experience and mm -hmm. many different places and things and, and uh, experiences you've had. That which I love because I'm very much like that too. You roll with whatever's happening. Let's just sweep it up and get back out and do it. And that's a great thing. Some mm -hmm. people freeze, they panic, they run the other way but you run towards it, which I think is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's years of really early young training. You know, when I was when I was 22 and doing national test spot commercials and so forth, you know, you're, the pressure is on. There's a lot of pressure to get the lines right and be correct. So you just learn to stay calm. And that night that Mr. Harnick came to my show, I watched the video, it's not my best, but the review said, she remained totally professional, calm. If there was any sweat going on, we didn't see it. I'm like, well, thankfully. Um, but going back to people, get ready. So my director, Andy Gale, 20 something years ago, or maybe 15, when we first did the show in New York, he picked that song. He said, how about people get ready? We were gonna open with it, but then we ended up putting it to the back. And it's one of the several songs that I wanted to be on the CD and in the next show. So Curtis Mayfield wrote it. Uh, it was top five, uh, of all time, songs of all time. He comes from a gospel background. So I first picked it out just because I uh, uh, related to it because it's funky and fun, but the lyrics are so true. Basically, going up on them, and people just go, hmm, hmm. It's like, get your ducks in a row. Where are you spiritually? Where are you emotionally? Where are you physically? People get ready. There's some changes coming on. Um, it could be the end times. It could be our last day on earth because of illness or catastrophe, but am I ready to go? Plus I love to travel and there's a lot of talk and travel about in that song as well. Probably a couple of people have said that it's a perfect song for right now. That's what they've been saying on the radio. It's been getting, it's been getting a lot of really great mm -hmm. reviews. That song is singled out. And uh, in fact, Stephen Moser said that one in another one home that I sing, Bonnie Raitt, he said, these two are proof that she needs to do a totally contemporary album next time. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. Mm -hmm. But it rings true to people. Everybody's thinking about time is of the essence. What do I really value with my life? Where am I putting my priorities? Where am I spending my money? Um, am I really, if I'm to meet God tomorrow, am I ready? If I'm to meet him tonight, am I ready? Um, there's a lot of change going on in the world right now. And it's kind of an exciting time to be an artist. And it's definitely uh, something that I love to do is go back and find all these really wonderful songs written a long time ago. This one was 60s, but a lot of the things that I love to sing are 30s and 40s and 50s. Um, they ring true today, very relevant for the times. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think uh, even if people have heard the songs previously, 
they take on a whole new meaning later on based on things going on. Have you noticed how music does that oftentimes? Yes. I can sing something that I learned years ago and it meant something different to me when I sang it then than when I sing it now. Right. Really because of life experience. I right. connect to the lyric deeper than I did when I first sang this and most songs. But definitely they, they yeah, they ring more true. Absolutely. Christine agrees. Thank you. Yeah, she said absolutely. And when you did the uh, capella, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got... <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are the things, what are some of the things that, um, you know, give you your source of inspiration to be so creative as well? You've, uh, have you, you've gone into songwriting as well too. Have you ever tried to I, think about that or wanted to do songwriting at all? At, well, toy, I, with, toy with it. I think I probably will because I really need to write a book. But uh, my thing was always more about the communication. I always wanted to act, sing, and dance. And I like to discover old lyrics and old material and old plays and old musicals and hymns. I love hymns. Yeah, a lot of songs to pull them out and share them with a new audience. That's really my passion. So to write is a whole different art form. I've done it a couple of times. I probably will down the road. But my passion is to find these things and introduce them to people. That's what I did with my first show and my Sheldon show. And that's kind of why I did I'll Get By um, tonight. Yeah. Uh, there's so many wonderful songs that have already been written that I like to share. I'm kind of a historian. Absolutely. Um, I like to pull it out. Uh, to find my inspiration, my family, my grandparents. Um, one of the reasons that I have a house in the middle of nowhere is I grew up with uh, security and a, well, in, in a little suburb of Detroit. But my grandparents both lived in small towns, and so I idealized having a yard and family and normalcy. Very important. And that's possibly one of the reasons that I didn't make a major move to L.A. or New York. I wanted to own the home first, and then once you're a homeowner, you know it's harder to get away, except for work. Um, but uh, a lot of old artists have inspired me, a lot of singers, a lot of old actors, a lot of film, uh, a lot of great songs. Anybody that you uh, would still love to collaborate with, work with, maybe do a duet with as well, along, uh, sort of on that bucket list for you, Jennifer? Oh, most people, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to sing another song with Tom Wopat. We stay in touch a little bit. I'd love to do something with him. I would love to do something with Michael Feinstein. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many great singers. I mean, I would love to work with a lot of people. I'm talking to a couple other pianists as well as, as Ted, because Ted gets so booked. And um, one of them, we may be doing some symphony work together, which would be really cool. And uh, Ted and I are working on another show, and I'm in the background doing more things. But yeah, I'm open to working with a lot of people. There's a lot of greats out there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So what's a, what's a typical day for you like, Jennifer, when you, know, you get up and your eyes and shine? Are you... Do you go right to music? What 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 are some of the things you do? <laughs> I'm finding this is a confession. I'm finding it harder to go to bed at night with this pandemic and the lockdown. You too, everybody, and is, more difficult yeah. to get up. So, I typically wake up and read my phone, which is a no-no. But I'll read my daily, you know, people that have sent me things and and so forth. And then I'll make breakfast, have coffee. Um, I get out and walk, but normally in more structured time, I walk early or go to an exercise class that we've not been able to do for six months. I just got an email today that the classes are officially going back indoors this week. So I'll get some structure back by going to 9 a.m. exercise classes. Um, I try to read, I try to do a lot of email stuff in the morning. I end up exercising some degree here. If I've got a project, I'll vocalize for a while. I will frequently, with the extra time, sing through my Sheldon Harnick show. I'll just listen to it and sing through it. Um, Typically, like tonight, I got an audition that I have to send in the morning. So when I'm done here, I'm going to go and submit it, send it off. I already filmed it. Um, but my days are different every day. They're not as structured. And fortunately, I do, I do creative things throughout the day myself um, to keep me inspired. I'm not watching a lot of TV right now. There's, the news is kind of too sad. Um, I was cooking a lot at the beginning of the pandemic, but not anymore. I'm focusing more on creative deadlines again. 
Well, as we've been saying, you're supposed to be six feet away from each other and 10 feet away from that refrigerator. <laughs> I finally got the brakes on. I finally got the brakes on a few days ago, but it's so funny. I'm not an ice cream person and everybody's doing this. I've been buying ice cream. I'm not a chips person, but I've been buying chips. I made bread, I baked bread, I made biscuits because one of my old students, we didn't even talk about when I directed high school plays and musicals, which was fun. One of my old students was um, posting date weekly um, breakfast making, so I did his biscuits and some things. But now I'm back to order and you know, self-control and all that good stuff. So let's talk about that. Yeah, the teaching and, and, and that part of your life too, which I know is near and dear to your heart as well. Tell us about that, because mentoring young minds is a very important thing, right? Very important to share, very share. When I was um, living in Detroit, actually when I was living in Nashville, I was performing and I was working as a, as a trainer. Um, the training job ended and I was performing on this night ship. It was called the General Jackson Showboat in Nashville. It was wonderful. We did like four different shows in one evening. So everybody got to do, it was very good, very great for creative people that don't want to do the same show eight times in a row. We did four different things every night. But uh, I was um, director of drama at a school called Brentwood Academy and it's outside of Nashville. And I directed a play and I'm still in touch with a lot of the students and that's been many, many years ago. And I loved it so much that when I moved back to Detroit, I found that my um, principal from my high school was principal at the neighboring high school. So I went to him and he said, if you can bring musicals back, I'll hire you. So we did Bye Bye Birdie and then I did four more years of directing uh, high school kids, which was a highlight because I had worked with Uta Hagen, the, the famous teacher director, um, actress. And I shared a lot of her knowledge with them. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me. And I loved it. It just did not pay enough for me being um, getting ready to move across the state and um, freelancing multiple jobs. I had to fin eventually give it up. But I did that for five years. I loved it. And I offered my services at the high school here, but they have not ever followed up. And then it was also teaching little four and five year olds, three to 11 year olds, how to sing and dance for years. And I loved that. Mm very fulfilling to see the light go on and to get them past knowing the material so that they could really just focus on communicating and selling out and singing and i miss that maybe i'll go back to it because it's definitely a passion and they received it well and most of my students are, are my facebook friends which is amazing right Thank which you. is amazing it's really amazing Marianne says she hopes it's vanilla ice cream that you're having. That's what I love, Marianne. I, I love didn't. <laughs> I had net. I had Ben and Jerry's Netflix, which I was really in love with. It was. It was amazing. Michael uh, Stevens says, as a multi-dimensional woman in this crazy arena we call a planet, that is what it is. It's a clay, crazy arena we call a planet. Jennifer, do you feel your musical muses are predominantly personal, or do you feel as if you're singing for others in peripheries? Oh, that's good, Michael Stever. Michael, did you see I gave you credit earlier for doing my videos? We played a couple of yours. Um, I would say from the Uta Hagen background, it's, it's coming from within, so I connect with the material, but I do it for others because it's not fun for me like it is a lot of people to get out and perform. It was at 16, 17, 18, 20, but I do look at it as a service and I do look at it as, as the gift that I need to share so in that sense, I'm giving uh, more for others than I am for myself. Thank you, Michael. Mm, that's a beautiful, beautiful uh, question. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so when you look at the, your body of work, which is extensive and which, con <laughs> which continues, uh, what are some other things that you want to do? You mentioned a book. Do you want to prepare a memoir? Is that something that you would love to do? Yes, eventually I need to. That's a whole discipline that I don't have patience with right now. I'm finding this last few months, it's harder for me to sit down and just spend time reading and writing. Um, that was always what I did. I used to keep journals. I'll get back to that because I think my story is kind of, we haven't even talked a lot about it. I mean, parts of it, but it's, it's inspirational for some, uh, just like we said earlier about walking through the next door and the next door and, and so forth. So I'll probably write a book at some time, at some point. I'm getting my materials ready to find a new agent for acting because it is my passion. But the CD and producing the live shows in New York and being a homeowner, which is really tough at times when you're a freelancer living in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. um, I will probably uh, put that out full force. I'm doing a new demo reel and I'm doing, I'll get new photos soon. 
And um, I do a lot of the self submission, so I'm going to pursue that so I get more into the film work again. That's the big thing. It's all self tape now. Everything is uh, self tape, absolutely. <laughs> And it's a really good time. They keep saying for those of us that are not in New York or Chicago, we're actually getting, I mean, Chicago, I have to go into to audition, but New York and LA are taking submissions from other people that they've never done before. They're opening the playing field is what they're saying. So I need to step that up. But the music, the CD was a priority and they're creating the live shows were a priority and being self-employed single uh, female, I can only do so much. And so sometimes the creative things will be, um, I'll put on hold for a while, but I want to do that. Um, I do want to tour with my shows and my CD, and that was starting to happen right before the crunch, the uh, the pandemic lockdown. So I'm sure we'll do some of that. And then I just want to create a lot more music. There's a lot of music that I want to do. I have background in country and pop and jazz and classical. And um, like I said, the the soul stuff. And I really, really want to put a lot more music out there on a, on a much larger scale than I am right now. Would you do a Christmas album? Oh, I want to do a Christmas album. Yeah. I already have a lot of my songs chosen for a Christmas album. You yeah. do? Yeah. LA. Yeah. yeah. So we'll look forward to that. That's for sure. Yes. That would be absolutely. And do you want to be backed by an orchestra or what do you envision for that? I would say probably. Yeah. But I love the intimacy of just Ted and I and a bass player for the first album. The Sheldon album will be the same. I'm asking Ted uh, and possibly Matt Baker to do some uh, symphony arrangements for me coming up so that when the opportunity presents, I have. Because my background is working with full orchestras and symphonies. Right. And I would love to do that. But again, with just me paying for it, that's a lot for one person to handle. So yeah. right now we're doing small. Yeah. But I am I am creating arrangements as we speak for larger groups or for symphonies again. That's kind of exciting. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you have a self tape type thing that you've got to prepare for an audition for tonight, huh? I already did it. You already this did. was this was just a look. It was no audition, but uh, typically, what I'm finding for voiceover auditions and stuff, I'll do it late at night and then I'll let it sit. And the next morning, I'll come back and edit and pick my choices and send it off. And say, this was just a look-see, which I probably won't get, but they wanted some variety of shots. And because I didn't have time to get somebody to photograph, I just took some running footage on my phone. And so tonight or tomorrow, I'll go and I'll clip it into, into single shots and send it off. Very nice, very but nice. Those things you, just kind of come out of nowhere. Do you do a lot of voiceover work? I have done a lot of voiceover yeah, work. That's I great. love it. I love I, it. I do too, yeah, I do too. There's a lot of people doing it now too. It's a, become a very, you know, well, I was always, community. it's very tight, but like in Detroit, I actually started doing voiceovers in Nashville, but when I moved to Detroit, I was always like the seventh or eighth person out of a group of five that always work. So I was always doing the character role or I would be the, a different choice, but I wasn't the regular, which was fine because I had enough other stuff going on. Uh, so I've had some really big auditions in the last year. Living over here, they forget about me and then I'll get like six, seven, eight um, in a row. But what I've been booking is the real quirky, funny voices, which is fun. A couple of Disney really auditions come up not too long ago on Netflix. So I'm getting larger character things and you know little voiceovers. But that's yeah, cool. So you're playing different characters and animated voices and things of that nature. I had to start that's doing great. animated voices. Yeah. That's a whole other area, which is fantastic and growing because <laughs> you have all the animation and the video games. There's so much of that, right? Yeah. So yeah. do you have a stu you have a studio there at home where you can do the uh, VO? No, I just use a silly app. But then when I book, I got to go to the studio and record. I'm going to upgrade really soon with the microphone. But everything is just small scale because, yeah. like I said, the priority was the other things. Right. But they, they get a good enough feel for what you do. Right. And uh, Renee Dusen, the men that I mentioned that in the Netherlands that um, introduced my CD to the Great American Songbook Radio Station, He's asked me to do a few voiceovers for him. So I'll send them off and then he'll kind of tweak them and so forth. And I do that as a thank you for featuring my CD for so long. Sure. Yeah. But he's also been able to tweak a couple of things and improve what I have technology wise. But um, that's been cool. Now with acting, do you have a preference? Do you like the dramatic roles? Do you, have you toyed with comedic roles? Tell us about that too. Yes. All um, of the above. <laughs> all of the above. I love... Back to Michael Stever's point of, um, do I do it for myself? 
it's, it's, I don't say it's therapy, but it's really wonderful when you're doing dramatic and you can connect with the material to the point that I can draw from my own life experience and bring life to it and make it really real to people. That's really a gift. So I love drama for that. But comedy was always kind of easy for me um, because I think you have to have a musical ear. And so I love doing comedy. And a lot of the videos that are on my demo are comedic roles that I booked. I think it's harder to book the comedy, but it was easier for me um, to book. And I'm glad I've been able to do it. Um, but I love both and I love them for different reasons. Comedic is all about timing and listening and hearing. And like I said earlier, I loved watching. I love Lucy and yeah. Dick Van Dyke, Dyke show and Andy Griffith show. I learned a lot of timing from watching them. Oh. And then with the ear, I think it's the same ear that hears tap dance. You know, I can tap easily or more easily than I can do ballet or jazz. It's that ear. And I think that's a lot of what comedic uh, ability is, is the, is the able to hear it. Talking about creativity, Jennifer asked, do you like to draw or paint? She does both sometimes. I wish. I used to draw. I have done a little bit of painting, but I've always said, I was never a good pianist and I wasn't a very good flautist. I don't try to make things happen that aren't natural. Um, so I like to draw and I like to paint, but I'm not very good at either. Um, I'm a, a, quite a good writer. And I heard you say you were a proofreader at one point. I used to do that for a couple of my people. I find that easier than uh, some of the other arts. But I used to do a lot of sewing and a lot of different tiny work and I'm sure I'll get back to it. Um, but I know it's very therapeutic for people that draw and paint and do all the other arts. Absolutely. A lot absolutely. Of, one of my friends is doing mosaic painting right now with the little, the little um, pieces of, of ceramic everywhere. It's really cool. Right. People are coming into all new creative things. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and especially now, a lot of people have been, like you said, cooking or gardening or uh, writing the book they've always wanted to write or, or come up with different things that they yeah. wanted to do that they sort of held off because they said they didn't have the time and they were so busy you know we were always so rushed in our lives and then now this happened where we've had to pause and reboot and reset and uh, it's a real time of reset isn't it it is a great reset a lot of people are reevaluating um and really i heard ann hampton calloway say on your show that we don't know what tomorrow holds so where do we want to live tomorrow? Where do we want to live our days? We're not promised tomorrow. And it's got a lot of people thinking about those kind of things. Yeah. For me, I've already, because I've been self-employed and I've struggled as an artist for a while by choice, um, I've already known when I can spend on myself and play a little bit and when I can, when I need to, to watch what I'm spending. So this has not been as brutal for me as a lot of people. But the more money I make, it all goes back to my music because I really think that's what I need to do with the rest of my life. And I'd love to act more. But I already was kind of thinking this way before this happened. So this just reaffirms to me I need to do more and more of focusing on that, uh, blinders on, really. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and people yeah. respond. Like I said, the CD's been getting some great airplay and good feedback. And my, my old videos, the classical stuff is getting good airplay, are getting good response. And... The hardest thing for me was putting it out there the first time, not knowing what people would think. Um, well, did you, were you hesitant? Yes. And what was it? Uh, fear of rejection or just because uh, you put so much of your heart and soul in it that they would judge or because we all have different things we think about before we go out and just say, here I am. For me, I'm a perfectionist and oh, I man. always hear with the classical, the technical is either there or not. And with the tech, with the classical, you've got to think placement, you've got to think when I'm singing Italian or Russian or Latin or whatever else I've sung, um, is the language correct? Is the placement correct? Is the no correct? Is the breast support correct? So ironically, the first few that I put out there just happened to be the first ones that I put in the, CD, put in the VHS and filmed and put out there. One was, um, I think it was my near marquee where I go up to a D, which is just above my natural range. And I'm like, I'm going to put it out there. And hopefully I wrote, don't be too critical. I hope you enjoy Because I, I was thinking as all the classically trained people are going to go, oh, she nailed, you know, that was wrong. And then the first thing that happened was these people write, that's unbelievable, incredible, wow. And I'm like, really? Mm. 
Mm. I almost never shared that. And same thing with about 75% of them, putting them out there was scary and what people would say critically rather than just say, you know, this is my work, enjoy. Right, right, absolutely. So it's getting you, over that. And you did it. I did and, it. And they do enjoy. Yeah. And it's easy to see why, because you're, you're brilliant at what you do and you put well, your heart and soul into it and you want to, you know, offer the best product and the best, you know, material for the audience to enjoy and really be impacted by. And that, that really matters to you, right? It does really matter to me. Yeah. And what's great is when there's, there's um, critical acceptance, positive reviews, people saying it really touched my heart. Um, I love that song. I never heard it. Um, please do another one. I mean, there's just such great feedback that comes from people. Thank you for sharing the video. Thank you for singing live. Thank you for bringing this song to my attention. Um, thank you for touching my heart. There's a lot of different things that, that are rewarding just by putting it out there. So I'm glad I did. But like I said, the biggest thing was getting the courage to put it out there for um, the critical eye. And the CD has been a blessing because the feedback has been really, really uh, wonderful, really supportive. Not everybody loves it, but the feedback has been strong enough from the reviews. Right. And the airplay, um, consistent airplay from certain uh, wonderful radio personalities. David Kenny has been great. Andy Cahill has played it a lot. Um, Janice Murphy, uh, Renee Dusen. There's a lot of them that have continued to play it. And a gentleman by the name of Sandy Leatham has played it at least six times in London. In London, and yeah. He played a brand new song from my new CD, uh, Sunday. No, um, when did he play it? Whenever his show's on, Monday afternoon. And he's going to play another one next week. And he's the one that started finding things on YouTube and putting it on his radio program. So Very nice. Yeah, really cool. That's it. The more, the more people hear it and the more people appreciate it, the more they fall in love with it and they want it. And actually, I was looking at some of the comments. Several people said they're already ordering the CD. Oh, so, thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's what happens on our show. And That's we gave great. them little tidbits and samples of it tonight. And uh, they fell in love with it already, which is extraordinary. And uh, I'm so good. Everybody has fallen in love with you tonight, Jennifer. Oh, and uh, this was really fantastic. Uh, I can't believe we've talked for almost for about two hours. Doesn't well, it go fast? It goes very fast. Because you've seen it as a viewer, a regular viewer yeah. of the show, and now as a guest. And it, the time really goes uh, extraordinarily so fast. fast. It feels like it's maybe 45 minutes or so, but. Thanks so much for joining us here oh, on the welcome. show and all of the great conversation, the stories, the levity, the music, uh, the videos, the live performance. Really, really terrific episode here of our show. And uh, we appreciate all the love and, and just everything that you do because you're, you're doing it for the right reasons. It's heart centric, mm -hmm. it's soulful, it speaks to you and it speaks to the audience and that's what it's all about. And uh, I hope you enjoyed your time with me as much as I certainly have with you, Jennifer. I loved it. Thank you. I'm just so sad that our song got cut, <laughs> but cut off at the end. But whatever. You'll have to buy the album. That's great. So they'll hear that's that. right. A little bit of a teaser, and yeah. and you're welcome back anytime. Thank the door you, Jim. is always open. I I hope uh, being a guest met all the expectations that you hoped for. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, and thank you're you everyone welcome. for listening in. Yes, and everybody now hears where they come in and they say goodbye and thank you. And <laughs> We really appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer, for, sh for sharing your talents with us tonight. Thank and you, Renee. Thanks for a nice thank show. Thank you, Kathleen Walker. So we appreciate all that as well. And Jennifer, you're the best. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Sam. And uh, is there a uh, website somewhere people can go or Amazon or if they want to uh, yeah. follow? Yeah, so jennifergroberts.com is my website. Bravo from Thanks Michael. From Michael. And Thank Marianne, you. that was he, great. Let's oh, talk to her. I miss you. Yes, ya. Marianne, I miss you too. We didn't even play the, the classical stuff. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. Um, so jennifergroberts.com. And then I have, thank you, Jensen. And then I have um, Jennifer Roberts at All About Jazz. And that has all the, all the, uh, a lot of the reviews, a lot of the clips, a lot of information, um, press things. That's called, um, thank you, Kathy. That's called Jennifer Roberts at All About Jazz. And right now it has even more on it than does my website, jennifergroberts.com. So uh, I'm also on Amazon. Oh, thank you so much. Really nice. Beautiful I believe. Yeah. I believe. Thank you so much, Christine. Mm. 
Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot of places and it's on Facebook and um, I have an artist page on Facebook as well. So I'm findable. If you Google, you'll find some stuff. Findable. findable. <laughs> I love that word. Well, there's, that a, is, there's a title for a song. I'm I findable. Like, I'm love findable. Yeah. yeah. There's like um, 50 million Jennifer Roberts, but there is a Jennifer Roberts YouTube channel and there's, you know, you can find me if you look and there's some reviews that will connect you to other things, but there's a lot of Jennifer Roberts. So if you write uh, Jennifer Roberts, New York City, Jennifer Roberts Cabaret, Jennifer Roberts, Jennifer G. Roberts actor. I mean, there's different ways to do it. But Good yeah, stuff. thank you so much, Tim. Oh, it is my pleasure. And again, you're welcome back anytime. And uh, Jennifer says, oh, thank you, Jen. <laughs> you that was awesome. Yeah, she's Zen, right? She's Zen. <laughs> Yeah. We uh, wish you nothing but continued success, and Thank we'll you. see you as a viewer as well. Yes, you uh, will. The best of health, the best of blessings for you and for your family, and uh, can't wait to have you back again. We'll chat some more, play some more music. This was uh, an absolutely brilliant episode, and we appreciate all the time, too, because we chatted for about two hours plus, So, and that's really beautiful. So, again, we're bringing back the art of conversation on this show, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, which huh? I love. And thank you for allowing me to share because I shared some things here that I normally don't. So thank we you We appreciate very much. that. We appreciate yeah. that. You take care. You be well. You. And we will see you again. Thanks for being with yeah. us, Jennifer. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. Bye-bye now. And good luck with the voiceover, too, that she's going to be submitting as well. Wasn't she amazing? Absolutely. And what I love is that she goes with uh, however things flow. And that's what you have to be as an entertainer. That's what you have to be as a performer because, you know, anything can come your way. And that's really important. Her voice is extraordinary, isn't it? She's so versatile and her acting chops are incredible. And obviously a lot of love and, and lovity for our very special guest acclaimed actress and singer Jennifer Roberts. Check out her new CD as well as we mentioned. Uh, we'll show you the cover of that as well. An evening with Jennifer Roberts, getting a lot of airplay, a lot of people loving it. And as you know, we like to just cycle through some of these fantastic photos. Once again, if you joined us late, uh, she's so passionate and she's so loving. And uh, this is, again, some of her acting material as well. But uh, we love when we have guests who really share their time and they open up their lives and they feel comfortable to share moments with us here on the program. And uh, again, this is another great shot, Michael Feinstein as well. And Tom Wopat, yes, she mentioned that earlier too. Again, this shot I absolutely love. And um, of course, Mr. Harnick and Jennifer. Some really beautiful shots here. And uh, we thank all of you for sharing uh, the wonderful lovity with Jennifer as well. Believe me, she felt it. She's a, a fan of our show. She watches it all the time, which we really appreciate. She often comments. Good night, Jim and Michael C and S and uh, Rini. You got it. Wonderful having you here, Marianne. She was so nice. Isn't she, Kathleen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Told you she would be. You know it. Another great show tonight, Jim. Good night, everyone, and God bless you as well. And, of course, you know, here on our show what we do. Uh, oh, let me tell you. Beautiful photos, right, if you're just seeing them now? And if you want to see this episode again, all of our shows are archived on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. So you can share the link. Uh, we would love it if you subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. We just posted some other uh, material in our Master's Mantras Live series, which are positive videos and commentary as well. And there's other professional work on there. And our entire series for Jim Master's Show Live is on YouTube. Very enjoyable evening. Thank you, Jim and Jennifer. We thank you, Marilyn, in Wichita, Kansas, for watching uh, as well. Want to let you know that tomorrow night we have uh, award-winning cartoonist and also vice president of creative for King Feature Syndicate. You know the comics that are in the papers? Yes, Frank Caruso is going to be here tomorrow. That's going to be fantastic. Then we have another fantac uh, fantastic actor and singer. Bart Shadow is here on Friday. And then on Saturday... Boy, we're going to have a great time with our guest on Saturday as well. We always have great times uh, here on this uh, broadcast series. 
Richard Pryor Jr. is going to be here on Saturday. That's right. Richard Pryor Jr. is going to be here on Saturday. Then on Sunday, Colm Keegan from Celtic Thunder and his solo career. He's going to be here live and direct from Ireland on Sunday, September 24th, which happens to be my birthday. I invite you to join us. A very special episode on September 24th. The Voices of Classic Soul will be here. They are remaining members of the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Drifters, and the Platters. They... Uh, approached me and they said we want to be on your show we love the show we watch it we follow it which we really appreciate they're going to be here on september 24th live which just happens to be my birthday so it's going to be really cool and i can't believe that's like well, 16 days away or so so we're gonna have a great night on september 24th again the voices of classic soul will be here uh exclusively on the gym masters show live a couple more comments coming in have a good night, Jim, uh, as well. You too, Kathleen. And uh, thank you, Jim, for another good show. I look forward to them. I know you do, and I appreciate that. And uh, Renee, thanks for another great show, Jim. Everyone have a good night. You as well, Renee. Hope you have a good night there in Iowa. Very enjoyable evening. Thank you, Jim and Jennifer. Thank you very much as well. And as always, folks, we always say relax, take care of one another, breathe, that's right. Breathe from the diaphragm. Love one another and uh, be good to others and to yourself. It's a grand thing when you do. All the cast of characters say good night. I say good night. We'll be here tomorrow with another amazing show with renowned cartoonists. Yes, Frank Caruso. That's going to be amazing. Look forward to that tomorrow. I'll see you guys on Facebook at Gym Masters TV, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, Twitch, and YouTube. At Gym Masters TV. Everybody, thanks for joining us. We thank once again our fantastic guest, acclaimed singer and actress Jennifer Roberts, and faithful viewer of our show, which we love as well. You guys have a good night. Thanks for all of the love and attention and sharing the links and liking the pages as we continue to grow this entertainment lifestyle talk show series together with all this levity. We always have a good time here, uh, and that's what it's all about. You can't always be too serious, right? Good night to you, Kathy. Good night to you, Marsha in Massachusetts uh, as well. You, you caught the video that we did, your new video on Master's Mantras of the butterfly and orange flower, which was the zinnia, was so gorgeous. Yeah, we were uh, out on the coast the other day and we were taking some photos and all of a sudden we were looking at, the, you know, we had these uh, zinnias in the yard and uh, this huge butterfly just landed on it. And I just happened to have the camera pointed at the flowers and then the, zitty, the uh, butterfly landed right at the perfect time, spread the wings and stayed there for about a minute, which was unbelievable. It was like posing, <laughs> posing for the camera, uh, probably knew it was going to end up on uh, our YouTube channel and then just flew off into uh, oblivion. That was really a, a rare moment. We shared it on the Master's Mantras live on uh, the YouTube channel. Um, no commentary needed, no words needed, just beautiful nature, one of the constants in life uh, to remind us of the beauty and the natural beauty that's all around us. So we posted that on our YouTube channel today. Look for Master's Mantras as a series uh, of Master's Mantras live uh, episodes there. That was season one, episode 10. We posted that today. It's only about 30 seconds, just enough to remind you of the beauty of life. And really, again, we were taking uh, photos of the plants of the zinnias, and then the butterfly just landed right there and stayed there and posed for us, which is unbelievable. Butterfly Zen, go to YouTube and check out Master's Mantras, as well as all of the episodes of our show. It's, it was so close up, as you wrote, and matched all in orange. Really great, yeah. And the, the zinnias were all in bloom as well. Really cool stuff. Love sharing as much as we can with all of you around the world, entertainment and comedy and inspiration and education, whatever we can, we, uh, we deliver it to you. So, good stuff. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We love you all. We love putting these shows on for you every night. And uh, we will be here tomorrow. Don't forget, uh, as we always say, to smile. Put a smile on somebody's face. Put one on your own as well. Share the lovity. We always say share the lovity as much as you can around the world. A word that just happened to 
develop here on the show. Find your go-to place. Mine is the ocean, as we always say. Find your go-to zen place. And again, we'll be here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Live on the Gym Masters Show live on YouTube and Facebook, Periscope, and Twitch at Gym Masters TV. You have a good night, everybody. Thanks for everything. We'll see you tomorrow right here, same spot. We love you all. Take care. Good night. And we also thank our dear friends at LMG, Lampkin Music Group, for their love and continued support of the Jib Masters Show Live. Thank you to everybody at LMG. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow on the Jib Masters Show Live.